Ugh, I can't talk now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis, the Dungeon Master for tonight, and we're going to play some Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah! Yay! It's time for adventure on so many levels. <laughs> uh, tonight, mm -hmm. our players are Chu Chu Schubert as Otterkey, the Tiefling Paladin. Good evening. Viv as Amethyst, the human druid. Hi, guys. Mark Kilfoyle as Alaric Copperbeard, the dwarven rogue. Hey, how's it going? And Starla Hutchton as Nirakina Ethu, the high elf cleric. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, if you guys recall, last time... Uh, you guys, uh, you know, you uh, you had a little uh, funny business happen on your train ride <laughs> through the Barrier Mountains, uh, and you had to fight some phase goblins, and uh, you saved the train from crashing, or at least part of it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, you saved the part with all the people on it, and that's what really counts. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But you, uh, after celebrating your, you know, rescue of the mine in the Barrier Mountains, you were headed back to the main gate that would take you to the outside, outside of dwarf territory. Uh, but you were staying one more night in the inn uh, that is titled The Next Worst Thing, which, of course, is a theme bar uh, for dwarves that makes fun of surface dwellers. Uh, but uh, it sounded like before you guys headed out back into the above ground place, uh, you might have some business in this area. You are currently in the common area. It's city-sized underground, but this is the area where all of the different clans have a neutral space and it's used for trading with the outside world. So there's all sorts of you know, street performers and different shops and stalls and lots of uh, fun to get up to if you're looking for it. Are we looking for it? Because, uh... <laughs> you know, I would like to, um, I would like to find a bow and get rid of this stupid thing. Well, that is crossbow that misses all the time. <laughs> Um, Andri, uh, your halfling scout friend, um, just kind of pats her short bow and says, yep, I think those automatic things are just too finicky for me. <laughs> well, if it's made by us, it just aims itself, right? You want it? <laughs> I can try it. <laughs> Maybe, uh, see if there's some gnomes that can, uh, hook you up with, um, a jig or something for it to, to make the aiming a little... <laughs> a little easier. <laughs> no, I just I need the trust to be in my hands and oh my, my vengeance. <laughs> you need your vengeance in your are hand. Are we still talking about a crossbow? <laughs> we are. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm confused here. Okay, so I have this bow that you know I got in Villain Octa, but I don't know. I just I I really seem to favor this Warhammer and. I'm just I'm not I'm not having as much fun with it as I thought. So Yeah, I'll give it a try. It'll it'll keep me out of your way when you're trying to blast things. <laughs> <laughs> if I recall correctly, that was a plus one longbow. Uh yes. Yep. Yeah, it's a plus one. Hold on. Longbow <coughs> is plus one. Yes. And I'll handle Eric my the crossbow and the bolts. If you want some Oh, give it a try. Although you seem pretty handy with uh, throwing your hurling your weapon. Uh, that was that was a time when I needed it. I don't have that anymore, but I uh, I could pick up oh, a right. bolt, I suppose. That's right. <laughs> walk, walk. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was it was imbued in the equipment. I thought it was just your natural talent. Well, we uh, what we also have is that. Uh, in order to uh, show respect to the spirits down in uh, the the 
uh, Copperbeard territory, uh, Alaric sacrificed his war pick. Mm -hmm. um, right. To the, uh, the, the flame. thrower, actually. The one that I had decorated mm. with all the extra yes. bits and bobs. And, okay. Uh, so, yeah. That was I can the, still throw something. I just don't have anything <laughs> to throw. That's all. <laughs> I figured I'd give it a try to get both arms working again. Now that I got both arms again. Mm -hmm. One embarrassing thing is I never did figure out if I had any money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I, I I did I did reply to you uh, off offline uh, in just to sen the sense of uh, your family does okay and not only that but you you guys just rescued a very valuable platinum mine I'd say you left the place with the spending money. Do do we want to put a number to that? Do we need to? Um. Well. Or is it a matter of if I need something, I'll just ask. Let's Am I say, rich enough for this? <laughs> let's say you've got 500 gold on you plus a line of credit in any dwarven area. Credit. You know who I am. Oh, no, that could go wrong. <laughs> hey, big daddy. I also have the spare battle axe that I never use, though it's not imbued with any any special <laughs> magics. Is it well made? Did it work out? It is. It's 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 a, it came from from the southern barrier mountains where I grew up. Well, done as a standard battle axe. I mean, it's, for now, uh, my, my war well hammer, it's, it's got the name on it and everything. So, ah, excellent. Kind of, uh, <laughs> it was, it was kind of a gift from my mother, but, uh, ah, uh -huh. the, the war pick was more of a, out of necessity and it has a nice pointy end on it, which I like. <laughs> the war hammer is, is more, my style for me. But if I do find something I can throw, that'd be nice. Andrew yes, just grins and says, boy, I could just talk about weapons all day. The most interesting <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> all right. I am going to uh, pass know, over and talk to the, uh, long, plus one longbow to um, Archie over there. So that can be his now. Excellent. Thank you. I am just teasing, of course, if you guys do have shopping you want to do. That's <laughs> no, that's all. That, well, for me, that's all I wanted to accomplish. And I'll, I'll yeah. see what I can do with this crossbow thing. I so, just wanted to suggest to Andre to get the, um, the dark vision goggles like I have. Oh, um, and uh, so, yeah, let's yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember how much those. Uh, you know what? I'll say that you guys shop around and it is definitely something that it's it's a pricey item, but it's something that, you know, they deal with here. This this is there's a bit of an industry to make these sell them to those who can't afford them. And I'll say that uh, she has uh, they, they cost 500 gold and she has her her sort of her bit of the platinum um, from the mine. But she's a little bit wary of spending all of her money on on that when you guys are about to not be underground anymore. Well, I can, I can well here's I, I give a little bit of a discount. DM question: mm -hmm. um, If we do end up in the lake, if the fissures at the bottom of the lake, are we going to need dark vision? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're deep enough, then yeah, probably. For that matter, you know some way to breathe but you might already have a plan for that might um then in that case i will pay for half of the goggles just so i can save a spell slot <laughs> <laughs> she uh she she won't uh she won't turn that down right on no, i'll Got throw it. 100 on that too actually oh nice nice she's proven herself more than one battle and if she can't see she can't fight well I mean, that's she, true she probably fight anyway but Oh, you had, guys. Uh, I had won, you know, these extra <laughs> platinum in the contest. Uh -huh. Got a hundred hundred gold worth bar of platinum. <laughs> so basically between between <clears throat> all you guys, you're basically just buying her these goggles. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Fine, so after what she said last time, I figure, you know, she needs a little pick me up. <laughs> she is she is grateful and she uh you know now that it's not all coming out of her pocket she is she's excited again to uh uh get get some and she had she had played around with the ones that you were wearing for a little bit um amethyst and was certainly impressed so she goes and she uh finds her own pair uh essentially just you know goggles that allow the uh, grant the user night vision, Dark vision. 
See, it ain't all about weapons. There's other good stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Is that a heavy crossbow uh, otter key or a light one? Light. Okay. I never held one, so I don't know how big they are. <laughs> if I imagine it, I would tend to think of the, the kind that you could theoretically maybe hold in one hand is going to be a light crossbow. A uh, heavy crossbow is probably the kind that's, you know, would come up to your waist if you touched it to the floor and the kind you, you're definitely going to need some mechanical assistance to reload. Sounds good to me. I should be able to work this out. It's not as big as I am. <laughs> I mean, another thing to throw in the back, though, that's going to be awkward, but I can do it. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, you guys, uh, you know, bustle around the shopping district for a little bit. I'm sure you take in just some, uh, you know, free samples from food carts and so on. But uh, otherwise, you uh, conduct your business and um, and are ready to head back out into the forest. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, uh, did we did we stay overnight? I don't remember. Um, I'm thinking yes, you did. did. So it's probably okay. unless you decided to go shopping because it was afternoon when you arrived, and so you were trying to decide whether to stay in or not. You did. So you could have done the shopping the night before and be leaving first yeah. thing in the morning if you like. That's what that's what I was thinking. We got we got a long rest regardless. Yeah, but I just I had to reset my. Spells. So, All right. so yes, um, it's uh, first thing in the morning. You guys get a long, uh, good rest. Uh, you're able to s- stay the whole night uh, this time, and uh, and then in the morning you guys head out of Lenthic Gate, which uh, as as just before when you came through it the first time, is this you have this uh, curving, elevated path. <coughs> that leads back down from the cliffside to the surface where the, uh, where you, you once again have the, the forest area. And uh, right now you are at some roads that you did not travel on before. Uh, you went straight through the forest the last time. Um, but so now you are at your, your own disposal and I can put up, I can bring up the regional map if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. All I'm right, just trying to find it. <laughs> well, I'll I figure I've probably been around just about everywhere, but it's been a long time since I've been anywhere, so. <laughs> okay. All the roads are familiar if you've traveled them all. So. I remember one from another one, sure. So you guys have just exited Lenthic Gate, which is right here. And you've got the Lockdoor Forest here, and there are some small paths going through the forest here, uh, up to Villanocta. But of course, south of Villanocta was both of the uh, various uh, side missions that you guys had expressed some interest in uh, that uh, Madrigal had mentioned last time you talked to her. Cool. So we're headed towards the bottom of the mountain, right through the forest. So, yeah, so, you're, you've just come out of Lenthic Gate right here. All right. Well, should we head down the hill and hope we don't run into those wood elves again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as long as we don't disturb anything, they'll they'll leave us alone. Would you? Did you have problems with some elves? <laughs> what I wouldn't say problems. <laughs> Annoyance? If we do, they tried to sacrifice us to a monster. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be a problem. Oh yeah, Yeah. annoyance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Andrew suggests. uh, I I think after how it went down the last time, that at the very least, that group is going to give you guys a wide berth. Mm -hmm. We might run into some others though. But uh, if so, I would hope that they're going to be back towards the description that I originally gave you, which is that let's try not to make too much of an impact on the forest as we travel through it and stay on their good side. Amen. No reason not to. Is their good side east or west? I never remember. (laughs) (laughs) Whichever side takes you out of the forest as soon as possible. 
<laughs> uh, I'm fine with that. Too green there anyway. Uh -huh. uh, all right. So where are you guys headed? Um, towards the mm -hmm. south. I mean, I know where I want to go, but <laughs> I know that Amethyst has an issue with that. <laughs> How well, far I thought is we that? Would, uh, we would check on that fort first and on the way to the lake or decide depending on the news whether to go straight back to Villa Nocta. Mm -hmm. and you know if we come across a snail we come across a snail sounds good to me I still right. don't understand the snail part <laughs> its shell has some kind of magical properties so somebody wants us to get its shell and sell it to them oh okay well who who wants it Madrigal. Yeah, Madrigal. Right. Boss of a little town. Um, well, Andrew kind of just says, you know how in big cities there's crime? Generally, yeah. Um, Is she if crime? You, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> if you, she's not just crime, but pretty much all crime is going to go through her at one point or another. She kind well, of runs is, crime. She's in charge of crime. It is wise <laughs> to stay on her good side, but because it is in her defense, they big. only let so many people into Villanocta, and so someone mm -hmm. has to take care of all of the people that are outside. And uh -huh. there's not like this formal government that can keep everyone safe. So mm -hmm. they developed their own system. Mm. She keeps order. True. All of mm. that's true, and she's also in charge of crime. <laughs> that makes uh, perfect. I, just, some, I suppose. Uh, so, is this snail dangerous? Like, is it threatening somebody? Is it? We don't really know anything about it. Is it protected? It's valuable. That's all we know. Well, there's a lot of valuable things out there. A lot of things are harvested for value. Is that mm -hmm. what we're doing, or what you want to do? Or that's what they want us to do. They want you to do harvest yeah. it for value. Look, mm -hmm. if we don't find it, we don't find it. But if we don't go looking for it, we're probably not going to find it. Is that is that it? Mm, it's possible, but you know, I don't know. Giant magical snails range. <laughs> Are there a lot of them. Like, is there one giant magical snail, and it's the one kind of its thing, or is it like a whole valley of giant? It kind of sounded snails? like there was just one. We we literally only know that it's valuable and where it's like large, yeah. Like some I, things, <clears throat> they, they they grow to be able to talk and everything. Well, yeah, um, it gets really awkward if you're hunting down something to talk. We did uh, establish that um, when you guys first asked about it, that amethyst recalled a little bit about them, which is just that they're very rare. Um, that you don't recall them; they're not. Ten, they don't tend to be aggressive, um, but they, you know, they also tend to avoid, you know, populated areas, which is part of why you don't hear about them too often. So there's a, t yeah. there's a tower we haven't heard from, and if it's being menaced by a giant snail, that's okay, right? <laughs> exactly. If the snail depends is on, the problem, I'm down. Depends on why it's menacing, yeah, because... You know, okay. they're Madrigal's people. They're probably not necessarily the greatest of people. If that snail can talk, that's straight up murder. I don't know if I'm down with that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are the people in the tower are also Madrigal's people? No. Uh, affiliated? No. Is it? It's unrelated, isn't it, Christiana? Um, what Madrigal else? said is that she has an operation that's based on a farm that she hasn't heard from. Oh, it's a farm, all right. Yeah. Um, she described it as a farm um, and that it's an operation <laughs> of hers where she was expecting a status report and it hasn't come. And so what she said is that, like, if you guys felt like dealing with whatever the issue was, obviously that would be appreciated, but mostly she just wanted to know what happened. Because it, you got the impression that she was kind of thinking that it might just be like you're going to show up to find it a smoking ruin or something. Now, uh, you know, 
I've been in a hole for four years, but what time of year is this? Is it like fall? Is it summertime? It's fall, like fall. Pardon? That got cut off. Yeah. Fall. Autumn. Fall? Yeah. So if there is a farm, then they'd be harvesting, right? Theoretically, close to it. And how long have they been not heard from? I don't think uh, Madrigal got into said, that detail. Just, just a while. You didn't just longer than she would like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is she a patient person or not? Because you know, doesn't strike be, me as very patient. Maybe like five days. So. Well, but then. given that she asked us and she knew we were doing other things. Um, yeah. Not a rush. Yeah. True. She didn't put a timeline on it, so she didn't. Yeah. She really wanted to know if she could send somebody directly. Yeah. yeah. She offered you guys work, and you said you were interested. These were the two jobs she told you about. All right. And that farm's not far from here. That's the closest thing to check in on. Is that, is that right? Um, well, see, there's there's this lake that that we think you know it, it on our map. It has a, there's right. definitely some activity. So. It's kind of that direction, and I thought, depending on what the situation is, maybe we'll just head to the lake, and if the situation seems dire, we'll head back up to Villa Nocta and report in. That's my thought. It's kind of on the way All right. to the lake. Do we know of any, um, any um, harm coming from the lake, Fisher? I can't remember what Mellicamp told us. Um, that, there was... Melican. Some rumors when we were in um, uh, uh, the Us. the uh, the Doom. new crossing was that new was crossing. that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there there were some rumors of of stuff happening at the lake. Um, That's right. Yeah. Somebody was fishing and they they found they caught a shirt and something grabbed it and pulled it back was the rumor. But. So so I just, just, could just be I'm rumor, laughing just because I don't remember that, but I mean, I, I might have said that, that I did, but I don't remember that particular detail. Um, Since it's on the map. Mark, yeah. Mark, Mark, basically, there's three things. We've got the two things from Madrigal, the snail and the work farm, harvest people, whatever, not checking in. And then we have our original quest or campaign, which is to seal all the fissures, which are the purple spots. The yeah. purple spot in the lake is the one we're talking about now. That's our, like, primary goal. Gotcha. And then the other two are our jobs from Madrigal that we wanted to knock out. Well, you think Maybe things coming through two. these fishers located back in the mine? Is that, that the yeah. primary worry? Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. We've seen, you know, a couple different things, but yeah. yeah. yeah Every I single made one a of them has been different. I the map to, uh, to remove the circle here, but on your magic map, this one is now gone. But that is right. centered over where the uh, mines were and the fishers there. Right. The two fur. Yeah. <laughs> so the Andre, as you guys mentioned, you know, trying to remember what you had heard about the lake, she just says, "Well, I mean, what I've heard is that just you hear about traders who go down that way to, you know, trade with the uh, the towns there, and." they tend to either never want to go back or they just decide to just move there and settle instead of staying as a trader. It's a little bit strange. And people talk about it just being a weird place generally. Uh, but I, there doesn't seem to be anything especially sinister about it. And, and these things have been open for a long time. Is that it? <laughs> well, that's the question. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know I exactly. Guess, would I have heard about them in the intervening hundred years? No, nobody no. knows about these. Um, okay. Generally speaking, um, okay. there. Every so often, you would imagine that the people who might be near one might know about it, but so far they've not tended to be in places where there are a lot of people in order to deal with that question. Well. We got enough food for the road. Shall we ramble? Let's go. Let's go. We oh, yeah, we weapons for so long. Collect our horses, right? Yeah, you you do. Uh, you are able to collect your horses from the uh, mm -hmm. the stables. There are four yeah. of them staying there, and I believe that you dismissed your your fine steed. No, no, I'd let them be cared okay, for. Okay, like, so you have all of all them. The then. horses. Okay. And there um, was a spare horse, I guess. Yes, because originally uh, Mugen had one. And Andrew? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Andrew had her own. All right. 
<laughs> and my horse, I'll, 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 you know, give it, give it a pat, kind of head to head, and and mm -hmm. I'm All right. sorry so, for my reticence. Obviously, your name is Vengeance, and mm -hmm. I just didn't want to admit it to myself. He named his horse Vengeance. It gives mm -hmm. it gives kind of a snort and an eye roll, as if to say, "Finally." <laughs> <laughs> you know that means it's going to hold a grudge against you. Not against me, my friend. Well, you named it Not Vengeance. Against me. I mean, it's my enemy. The name. Uh, does this horse have a name? The one that I'm going to be trying to figure out which end is up. Logan never mentioned. Yeah, I, I don't think you guys ever went through and specifically named your horses, although you are you are able to now if you like. <laughs> uh, you get the sense that this is a horse that is probably seen seven or eight different owners as people just, you know, move through and sell it and rebuy another horse and so on. So it's probably had a bunch of names. It doesn't care. <laughs> it seems indifferent. <laughs> uh, what color is it? Um, I, ha you guys uh, have, there's. Yeah, there were descriptions <laughs> at one point. <laughs> so I pulled up a picture. I still have the picture of mine. It's like I, I have the hair, tokens. But... Um, but so you name it fungible. <laughs> So I don't remember whose everybody was, though. Like, so this one, I believe, was Amethyst's because it was the whole thing where it was a little more ornery, but she tamed it. And then these are the other three uh, colors. Yeah, the, Oops. yeah, that one, the, the, black, the white one with the black spots is mine. Okay. And then, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, one of them was originally... Um, uh, Archie's before he got his own. So I don't know. Right. It's that, that warp, that white horse. Then that'll be the one I, I ride on. It's right. called Snowball. Snowball. All right. <laughs> Snowball's hand chance in hell. I'm going to be able to ride this right. <laughs> right. So the plan then is that you are going to stop at that farm or um, on your way towards the lake. Is the general yes. idea? So yeah. based on whatever you find at the farm, you will or will not, uh, you might change your plans or something, but you're, that's where mm -hmm. you're going first. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you travel through the woods and uh, you don't actually encounter uh, any, uh, uh, any wood elves in your journey through the Loctor forest. Um, although in the middle of the path, you find a little bundle uh, of leaves, uh, and, and uh, Andre uh, immediately goes and, and picks it up and just kind of holds it up and uh, opens it up, and there's just there's some pieces of, of uh, spiced bread in there. She says, this is an apology. Mm, uh, looks like bread. Mm, road bread. Apology <laughs> bread. Yum. She breaks off a corner and out the rest if uh, you take know, a piece. You want some. I'm having some. Sounds so good to me. They're apologizing because they were annoying. They tried to feed us to yeah. a monster. I think I'd look a little scant at bread that comes from people who feed people to monsters, but no, <laughs> the sweet, sweet taste of guilt. <laughs> um, I guess that's your point. I I think the ones that tried to. Uh, feed us to that plant thing uh where maybe uh like an offshoot like yeah they, they maybe they don't get along with the rest of them either extremist wood elves yeah so in any case other than that you don't see any they they seem to be letting you pass uh un, un uh unbothered cool yeah are we near where we wrecked up that bit of forest are we far? Uh, well, you guys weren't quite going in that same direction because okay. when you uh, traveled through the last time, you didn't take the road. You went straight through because with mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, you're able to basically travel across, uh, you know, across the uh, land without needing a road. And you can go just as fast just because that's sweet. That's, a, that's awesome. an ability that she's got. Right on. Um, and so you went kind of this way when you're coming through. Now you're heading more like this direction. So you, you're not passing the same. Area. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so you make your way. You're, you're riding most of the day. Uh, you get oh. to. 
<laughs> uh, so probably a little discomfort from those of you who are not used to doing that. Um, you know, adjusting different, uh, you know, you, you use different muscles uh, when you are riding a horse as compared to uh, running from a steam golem, turns out. <laughs> Uh, so you guys make your way out of the, uh, uh, out of the forest, in, you know, in mid early afternoon, uh, we'll say, um, I'm, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll say you guys get out of the forest, um, by, you know, mid afternoon and you know that you have another maybe five, six hours of, um, of riding to go to get to where you think the farm is. So you could potentially go there and arrive at night. That might not be a good idea to, to ride up on who knows what in the yeah. middle of the night. Man, well, Did we, we want to camp, oh, mm -hmm. camp on a forest or I'm sorry. Do we want to camp on a forest or camp on a plain or grassland? Well, we can get a little bit closer maybe. Um, so mm -hmm. where on the map would do I'm going to say, idea I'm gonna say you're going right here. If you guys see where mm -hmm. I'm moving the little cursor yep. here. And you guys yep. just emerged like right here from the forest. Yep. Well, maybe towards down like where that, that lighter green forest square is. Okay. So yeah. like on the edge of that. So not in the forest, right. but on the Yeah, edge of so it. the forest has started to thin out a little bit. There, the trees there are uh, younger and thinner generally and it's not quite the uh the the thick landscape of uh the rest of the forest and you guys uh find a nice camp spot and uh you know settle in for the evening it's uh the weather's pretty nice tonight it's uh, clear and it wasn't too uh too hot and but it's not too cold yet although there's there's a little bit of a chill in the air at night We don't have to role play or anything, but I think Archie's gonna test out the bow a little bit and you know do little set up little targets and. All right. Hey, I'll, I'll join with the crossbow. Bit. See if I can figure out which end is up. Okay. Well, <laughs> so how about how about we uh, how about we uh, Andrew's gonna kind of you know <laughs> sit on a stump oh, and, and and watch and uh, oh. as you guys uh, go. So how about uh, each of you roll an attack roll with your respective weapons here. <laughs> I figured you were just going to split everything we shot down the middle. <laughs> All right. She is not the 14. target, incidentally, in case that was no. unclear. She's just... Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. oh, I've got this apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... 14. Uh, okay. 14. Um, you know, I, it occurred to me that I didn't set a, a value for your, your, um, yeah. So what I'll, Station what I'll say is it. that like, yeah, you, 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 you kind of carved a little circle on a tree, let's say, and it's 14, you, you hit, you're Wait. not quite towards the center, but you, you, you get it in the mark there. Is that going to get those elves at, mad at us again? If you start carving things on trees and shooting them. Andrew's like, maybe. Mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> too late now. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I rolled a 19 with the uh, light crossbow. All right, yeah, 19. That's pretty. Cl that's uh, almost just right in the middle. You know this thing works. I don't know why you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like me. I'm glad it'll serve. Yeah, it feels good and sturdy, kind of like it's built out of rocks, as opposed to that thing with its string. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little finesse. Yeah, I'm little. I ain't got no finesse. <laughs> I threw hammers <laughs> <laughs> and a pick. Yeah, true. Uh, I'm gonna spend time, um, and I'm gonna make this my second focused weapon. Okay. Uh, certainly, as you guys are camping overnight, that's not a problem. <clears throat> I think you can do it over a short rest, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So a long rest, you no problem. So yeah, you guys. Uh, you know, no no particular conflict arises on this day, so you guys can have a long rest and and uh, you know any any other things. There doesn't seem to be much happening. Just as an FYI, 
Guys, I am preparing the water walk spell in case we get there tomorrow. So cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm prepared to walk on water, right? I'm still new to the yeah. spell stuff. <laughs> For That's a whole great. hour. Yeah, I um I have water breathing. In case we don't walk on water? <laughs> well, you know, in case we can't stay out of the water to do what we need to do. Just... We have no idea where what's gonna happen with this portal issue. Yeah, and the fissure looked like it was in the middle of the lake. Mm. Is there an island in that lake? Uh, I no don't idea. see an island. Andrew says No, we didn't actually no. go to the lake. Andrew says there are two towns. Um, here, let me. Uh, it's a big lake, right? Get my yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's it's very big lake. Um, oh hey, that water walk thing of yours. How many people can that do? Can that ten? So it can work on the horses too. Yeah, in, um, in theory, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten willing creatures. Water, it's going to be a lot slower if I'm running. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's ten willing creatures for water breathing. I think it's the same for water walk. Hmm. Well, we can I make think we need to take the too. horses into the lake, though. That <laughs> seems, seems, seems a bit overkill. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't. I swim like a rock too. So if I can ride a horse that can ride faster underwater or run across it, that seems a lot better to me. Uh, Andre informs you that there are two towns uh, adjacent to Lake Elamon. There's Elamontia that is on the northwest side, and Senshin, which is on the south. There's a ferry that runs between them. Do I know anything about these towns? Um, probably not so much. I mean, you might have heard about trading, you know, coming from. Uh, generally, what you guys would probably know comes from that area is they're famous for uh, dyes. There's obviously a lot of fishing there, but they also make a lot of fancy colored dyes. Oh, pick up a new shirt. Mm -hmm. Maybe a hat. <laughs> Fetching hat. All right. So if there's no other uh, uh, particular business this evening, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, move to the morning. And uh, I'm 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 gonna cast plant growth on the trees that they were shooting up with the arrows, just in case. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. You are you casting that um, before you go to bed? Or yeah, in the morning. Yeah, before I go to bed. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the the tree actually d seems to grow almost like three years worth um, at your um, at your spell, and so the the carving is not completely gone, but it's definitely the you know barked over. It's much much faded, and the tree seems very healthy. Yay. <laughs> Uh, all right, so if you guys are getting on your way, uh, you're going to make it towards this uh, farm at, you know, uh, you know, it's like maybe 11 a.m. Oh, maybe they got lunch. <laughs> all right, so what you guys see in the distance doesn't really look any different than uh, a, you know, typical farm would but what you do you know realize the thing that puts this all into context is just the idea that uh andrea in particular could tell you more than the rest of you you know uh those of you who uh skipped 100 years um it, the world has gotten increasingly dangerous compared to what you knew so again the people who would have a small farm out in the middle of nowhere not really super close to a a city or even a like a bigger town are more likely to be there because they don't want anyone else's attention and they're willing to pay for that with added risk um and so whatever that might mean you know there might be some people who just like to be away from all the rules and crowds of a big city there might also be people who want to be away from all the uh, guards and laws of a big city. Um, but you uh, see in the distance, like I said, what looks like a uh, pretty small farm. It doesn't have a lot of fields or anything, but you do see uh, you're still, you know, several hundred yards away. There does seem to be a fenced in sort of... Um, small grove of maybe some kind of shrubs and then a couple of uh, a couple of buildings 
of unremarkable construction. We don't see any people though. Nope. Everything Very looking quiet. in shape from here? Like, is it broken down? Is the farm or the fields uh, uh, plowed or anything? Well, there's not really even any fields. They did say it was a farm, right? Mm-hmm. It looks the like amethyst. a farm, but it, the only the only cultivated thing that you can see is this little fenced-in bit of shrubbery. No animals. Mm -mm. Well, I was gonna um, ask about your little um, call thing. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the thing that that you you spin around in the air makes the loud noise. And, oh, that was the hammer. You know about. <laughs> the oh, that was community. Yeah, yeah. The the environment. yeah I couldn't remember where I got that from. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, oh, that thing. His knowledge of the land within three miles of me. Mm -hmm. Of me. Of me. <laughs> so yeah, let me um, let me whip out that bull roar and give it a spin. Okay. Um, so you you pull out this uh, device, um, which it really just resembles a, an ornately carved bit of wood on a long cord that you begin to spin over your head, and as it spins, it starts making this noise. <laughs> And as you concentrate on it and meditate on it and kind of try to expand your awareness to uh, take in all of the natural energy around you, uh, can't first make a nature check. Um, 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 um. Ooh, 17? 17. Um, you are going to be pretty confident that all all of the information you get is correct cool. all right so what this means is that you gain knowledge of up to three facts of your choice about the natural area you know land within three miles of you three facts hit me with the questions brainiacs well, <laughs> oh yeah not me <laughs> no well you could ask about any attacks. Um, it it can't really tell you like historical incidents, right? Well, I meant like recent stuff. Yeah, for that you could talk to the trees and see if they saw anything. But this is like yeah. if there's certain type of beasts around or certain mm -hmm. types what of people. Can it, can flora it tell you fauna here? Yeah, living people. Well, maybe dead one too, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so um can it tell us if there are any um any humanoids in the area or hostile spirits yeah. it can are you asking that question um yeah are there any humanoids or hostile spirits well that's going to be two questions two questions i know <laughs> um if you are so if you're asking about the humanoids the answer is yes that there are uh two living humanoids and they are in the uh, approximate uh, direction <coughs> of this farm sorry are there any um evil or magical yeah, hostile spirits hostile um, yeah you don't detect any in this area there's some small in different ones but none near the farm what about the crops can you can you find out what they actually do grow around here um are we looking for poppies <laughs> 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 medicinal herbs <laughs> smoke weed <laughs> was that what it was judge. yeah <laughs> My body. um um yeah you can ask about like what cultivated plants or there might be yeah okay uh what you realize is that this there's a concentration in this near this farm of a bush that grows uh berries and what i i have my uh name of the berries and now i can't find it um <laughs> um I, they're they're colloquially named bitter berries Okay. They're technically edible. They're not poison or anything, but they taste bad. So they're generally not very popular as a food item. 
so but there's popular. definitely a concentration of those bushes on this farm would amethyst know the other possible reason that somebody would be cultivating that um you not necessarily i mean you they're they're red you know, oh so for like dyes maybe madrigal doesn't seem like she would be into producing dyes for manufacturing clothes but that's just me fake blood really not uh, an operation could be a front extortion they, racket they make people sick if you eat too many of them or i was gonna just... say there's probably some drug uh, it's kind of a self-limiting thing because generally speaking people are not going to deliberately eat more than they should because <laughs> they just they, they... <laughs> can it induce vomiting maybe they taste they taste like medicine Ugh. well i'd just point out that if yeah. you eat enough of anything <laughs> it can induce vomiting so. that's true well, well yeah medicine. but maybe all the ones <laughs> needed in this case okay I'm going to go ahead close. and move us to the map and put you guys, because um, I'm assuming you guys are moving up closer. You're not keeping right. your distance. Mm. It doesn't seem to be anything. I got my shield out. <laughs> <laughs> you wave your shield back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I'll, um, so here's, here's a question. Are you guys, uh, so don't necessarily assume that you're actually this close until we settle a couple of things here. One, do you approach stealthily? Yes, I do. I don't know what they do. Okay. <laughs> we attempt to. <laughs> I'm on well, a horse. I don't know how that works. Well, so on that note too, like, are you bringing your horses right up nearby or what are you doing? I guess we should tie them up. Yeah, I would definitely say dismount. Okay. So we tie him up to Archie's war steed again. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, is that, I mean. That's not code. That's not code. He, he, he's, <laughs> he knows how to follow directions. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So. Um, I thought you tied horses to trees. <laughs> uh, but when so there's not you... a tree available, we use vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> All right, so we'll say that you guys, uh, at a safe distance, you you tie up the horses and you're approaching on foot, and you're attempting stealth. So I'll and have I'm casting pass without a trace. All right, good. So everyone, uh, make a stealth <laughs> roll and tell me if you uh, and tell me the result, but also add ten to it for your pass without trace. Okay. <laughs> I know I have shit yeah. stealth because of my armor. Uh, 22. Oh, wow. Yeah, 20 plus the 10, so. I got a 20. Nice. <laughs> I rolled a 4. 14. <laughs> Woo. All right. And Andre. And Andre gets. Fucking 35. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with the 10, I'd be sitting at 30, so, like, I'm invisible. <laughs> you are, man. You're not even there. You're man. Batman. <laughs> There's a reason I took this armor off when I was hiding down under. under uh, I, Andrew I'm does get a 30. Holy sweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, with Pass Without a Trace. Um, okay, so will you guys make your way up to sort of the borders of this farm. What you see as you're up close here, first of all, there's no activity of any kind uh there doesn't seem to be any animals in the area um it's actually you don't even really hear birds nearby uh, oh, there's an overturned wagon and uh make a perception check uh those of you who want to try to get a look at this wagon from because it's from awkward i'm gonna leave the crossbow back on the horse yeah. to perception yeah. 12. <laughs> 17. Yeah. I have to add everything. <laughs> Just the kid on math. Yeah. <laughs> um, you spot, uh, Nira, that the reins um, and the harness uh, where there might have been horses hooked up to the, uh, the wagon, it looks like there were horses hooked up and the harnesses are broken. Hmm. 
And so oh, this God. building looks like more of a work building. It has a big sliding wooden door right here. And then a regular wooden door over here. In this little fenced area, there's a bunch of bushes with bright red berries on them. This looks almost like a little cottage. Was the wagon loaded? Uh, it seems to be empty. I don't think that's the way you park your wagon. Should we check the cottage first? I think so. See if there's any windows. All right. Uh, who's going in first? Who's leading the way here? I'm loud. Somebody else should take the lead. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'll go. Sure. <laughs> You're <Shield> invisible. Up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you at the night? Um, so you're heading towards the cottage first? Yes. Okay. So you make your way. Is everyone following or? I'm going to wait here and wait for hand signals or shouts okay. or attacks. I'm going to stand over on the other side so I can see beyond the wagon. Um, I'm going to follow Star um, Nera. Okay. Um, you're, I'm sorry, what did you say you were doing, Alaric? Uh, just a little bit left of there, so I can see, make sure there's nobody sneaking up on the other side of the wagon. So like that? that's about good right there. Yeah, yeah and Andrea, I think, just walks around this corner just to kind of see what's over there. And she, she calls out that there's another small building behind this one. Um, so my, uh, let me move my window so that'll show up. Yeah, so she has <laughs> moved over. Um, on the other corner there, just to say there's another small building behind this one. Um, okay, so Nira and Amethyst, make your way up. Uh, the cottage seems to have just a simple wooden door. Should we knock or just peek inside? We're invisible. I say we peek. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste the spell? There are some windows. Okay. Mm. All right, well, I will... Look in one of the windows first right. to see if I see anybody. So, um, what you see, let me, I can't really move the map all that well. I can move all of our little uh, profiles, <clears throat> is what I can do. Um, so, what you see in there is that there are two sets of bunk beds, uh, seemingly unoccupied. There's a small table with some, you know, plates and silverware on it. Not like set neatly, but just, you know, sitting on it like they, that's just where they leave it. Um, and then there seem to be a couple of crates and supplies uh, of in there, but uh, you don't see anybody in there. Well, I'll go in and look around. So kind of quietly push the door open. Yeah, you push the door open. Um, you are quiet in doing so. Are you following her in, Amethyst? Um, yeah, I'm going to stand inside and um, just inside the door, though. I'm going to stay near the door. Okay. Um, I'm having uh, Amethyst rejoin the others just to avoid splitting up too much. You mean Andrew? Andrew. This, I'm sorry if I said something else. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I meant. Um, yeah, so... Um, uh, yeah, as you're as you're inside, uh, Nira and Amethyst, it looks like this is probably sort of like the living quarters for the people who worked on this farm. But you definitely see that there are four beds, you know, two sets of bunk beds. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to do an investigation check just to look for it. I don't know, anything that looks a little suspicious or, you know, traces of blood, you know, like <laughs> somebody got murdered. I sure, sure. Know, so. All right, go ahead and make uh, your that check. Great. Um, <laughs> let's see. So eight plus <laughs> intelligence. Uh, two, so ten. Uh, Not my ten. best. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to tell. Like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like wrecked, like there's no sign of a struggle or anything. Um, but there's also kind of a layer of dust on everything. Mm -hmm. Not, not weeks worth, but maybe days worth. Okay. So I've got a 20 on investigation. Okay. Yeah. You definitely smell that 
there, there were people here that seemed like afraid of something. Smell you their get, fear. Yeah. <laughs> That's disturbing. That's kind of creepy. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it's faded. Uh, you, you, the, from the way it, like you wouldn't normally be picking up on that sort of thing, uh, mm-hmm. except that it seems like it, it's coming from one of the beds. So like maybe someone was <laughs> staying in this building afraid for a while enough that mm-hmm. it kind of left, uh, you know, a uh, odorific impression, so to speak. Right on. So of course I tell Nara that. Um, well, do you want to check out the bed so I can poke around the crates? Sure. Let me go investigate the smelly bed. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you, you're not really going to discover anything else new. Yay. about the bed. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a, just a simple straw mattress. Um, the, you know, the, like the linens on it don't look super clean, but they're not, you know, filthy or anything. Mm. Um, it, but yeah, there's, it's a bed. There's not really anything mm. else unusual about it. Uh, in the crates, um, are various bits of, uh, you know, preserved food and other just sort of miscellaneous supplies mm. that, you know, are just things like, you know, uh, uh, extra clothes and stuff like that. So in specifically looking at the floor, is it at all apparent that there might be some kind of like trap door or storage under there? Make another investigation check. Hopefully this goes better. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't nope, you bitches seven. have guidance? <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> asked for help. So I'm guessing from that uh, from that result uh, from that uh, reaction though that you you pour over the floor looking for a trapdoor and don't find one. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Just, it's worth a shot, I guess. I'm touching I'm myself you guys with are guidance. Still, still being uh, quiet. <laughs> so that's a 19. I guided right. myself. <laughs> okay. Um, you spend some time searching the floor for trapdoors and also don't find one. And I imagine that Nira is standing there going, I just checked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you had that look on your face. That look. <laughs> See, but you got your characters don't know how you rolled. Yeah. But if I don't think she was looking <laughs> closely that's, enough, that's I'm going to check behind I, her. I, I let you do it. I'm but just check saying. Check happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like this place is probably empty. I don't think there's anything more we're going to get from this. <clears throat> They're taking forever. I'm going to step forward and take a peek in the big door. Yeah. Okay. Um, they haven't screamed. Nobody shouted. They're probably fine. Hey, Alaric. Probably. What is your or dead. perception score? Your passive perception. My passive perception, which is... Well, my, per- my perception score is five, so... Passive is 10 plus that? What, 15? Um, yes. Is it that? I forget. Um, it, no, it's, I believe it's 10 plus your, your perception score, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's actually, if you're using the D&D beyond, beyond, it's in the mid thing. I just, I, yeah. I don't know where anything <laughs> is in this thing yet. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't have it up. But yes, it is 15. Um, so let me just... Where did I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so with a 15, you go to take a step forward and literally just before you walk your face into it, you see a tiny, almost invisible strand running across from the corner here to part of the wagon. Oh, Hey, there's traps. Oh, can I figure out what I was going to do if I... Cheeky bastards. Make an investigation check. Uh, Ten. Looks like it does something. You can't see any mechanism. You only see this strand. But like watching it carefully, you're able to see where it is stuck like kind of glue to each point on the ends. But it doesn't seem to have any other mechanism. Hmm. Well, I pointed out to the 
eagle-eyed uh, ranger and the scary <laughs> horn dude. Mm. <laughs> Don't step on this thing. Um, Good eye. Well, it's uh, it's actually more like face level at the corner of the building, and then goes down to near the ground where it touches the build uh, the wagon. So oh. it's at an angle. When you point it out to Andre, she says, it "Looks like a spider web." I, spiders make traps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I'm tr looking for. I need a. Where's my hate um, bugs? <laughs> Why did it have to be spiders? Oh, there we are. <laughs> my spiders served us well that one time somewhere. We were. Yeah, still not yeah. a fan. <laughs> spiders are cool. So let me uh, let me just draw where you've spotted this first web here. They made it safely to the door, so I'm going to go ahead and walk to the door and peek my head in stealthily. Okay. <laughs> Make a stealth check. <laughs> you still got, you still, actually, Pass see. Without Trace, I think, needs to be within 10 feet, so um, mm -hmm. you're making a stealth check without the Pass Without Trace. <laughs> 12. Uh, okay. Nothing seems to happen. You make your way to the, the little cottage. Oh, by the way, it's 30 feet for Pass Without a Trace. Oh, 30 feet? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you, you still have it then. Um, so it would be 22. Then. Everything okay? <laughs> it's a mirror kind of, what? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good. There's a, it looks empty. Like someone that was like here. here. Yeah. <laughs> There's a trap out here, but Aunt, Aunt Andrew said it looked like a spider web. Uh, no. We I think fire. we should take we care of the warehouse. Yeah. So at this point, I step forward around the, th the thread and look in the warehouse. Uh, okay, so are you are like ducking under it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If it's at my eye height, then I should be able to duck under it. All right. It. Okay. So you duck under it, and you, you are able to, and this uh, sliding wooden door is closed. Um, you could test it to see if it's locked. Yeah, it I'll doesn't have concerned. like an obvious key area, but you, you you know it might be something that locks from the other side without a like a key opening. I'll, I'll gently kind of uh, see if it moves a little, just All to right. get is it one um, solid door or two sliding doors. It's it's one big um, piece that's fifteen feet long, and it slides to the right as you right. face it. Um, you make a slight testing motion of it, and you hear just the beginning of creak. It doesn't seem locked, but it also seems like opening it will probably make a noise. Mm. Wisdom eight. I'm sure I can peek in just a little bit. All right. You can open it just enough to kind of peek in. Yep. Um, it does kind of go. As you, as you. What open was it. that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so let me uh, open up what you uh, remove the roof here um well, let's try to move us around a little bit so you can see what's inside mostly what you see immediately when you're looking through the crack here is there's an open area that looks big enough for the wagon to roll into and then there's a table with uh, a bunch of crates that have little bottles in it that you can't really see what's in the bottles that's most, uh, that's what you see from through the crack right here I'm no sorry, I lost just walked you. into a meth lab. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat what it looks like inside? I lost you for a second. There is a space where there's enough room for the wagon to roll in, and there are crates with some kind of bottles in it. Huh. There's a little plaque on the door. It says W White. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, no. uh, that means uh, you're in Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, wow. Have a white named Walter. That'd be hilarious. Uh, white isn't a dead creature. Anyway. Um, right. I will, uh, since nobody seems to have moved, which is great, uh, I can make the door a little bit wider so I can uh, sneak in. All right. Um, it makes a very loud rattling sound as you open it the rest of the way. Uh, I look around nervously. Yeah. Yep, nobody that. <laughs> so what you also see more of when you're, when you're looking more uh, through it is that there are a couple of big sort of 
like barrel vats uh, that seem to have red liquid in it. And then there's a, a table up here that looks like it has various sort of uh, tools. And it looks like uh, one hand has a bunch of corks that have been carved out of a longer, a larger block uh, of corks. And then there's also a, uh, a trap door that looks like it exploded from underneath. There's scorch marks all around the outside of it, and the trapdoor piece itself is, is broken. Huh. Uh, there's still no people, though. Hmm. Hmm. What's on the table? I'll walk into the table. So what's everyone else doing in the meantime here? <laughs> Andrea, I well, think I guess I'm looking for him. Behind you kind of grimacing as you make noises. It, Archie's going to walk around the, the wagon directly to the door. <laughs> All right. Um, your passive perception is what, Archie? I don't think like it's 15. Eight, nine. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, as soon it's going to march you, straight to the door. Yeah. Um, you all of a sudden, you're, you're walking forward, and then it's all of a sudden, it's like you're, you're feeling like something's holding you back but you can't quite tell what it is and you try to back up to get a look at it and all of a sudden you can't pull either something has stuck to your chest um and uh it's 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 kind of got you i mean you're mm. you, you are stuck here you're gonna have to put in some like significant effort to try to pull yourself off of whatever this is the fuck now that you've, I mean, now that you're stuck on it, you can definitely see, oh, yeah, okay, I guess there's one of these strand things. There's uh, another one like this. But it, it has thing. stuck you. So are you going to try to pull off of it? I'm going to try to pull off of it. Okay, make a strength check. So I'm outside by now. And I'm, 23 I'm just watching. Isn't enough. Yeah, you're able to pull off and, and get unstuck from it. And so you can see now that there's another one of these strands here. Um, and uh, everybody roll initiative. <laughs> Thanks, Archie. <laughs> I did my own roll for his intelligence to see if he'd just go for it or look for a web. <laughs> 13 for me. Did you really, Church? I did. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you weirdo. 20. Hang on just a moment. Uh, Nira, did you say 13? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Archie, 20. I don't see. I need to... Hang on. <laughs> add it. Add. Amethyst is 6. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shoot. Okay, you know what? I just... 12, 13, 23, 5, 8. <laughs> um, Amethyst is 6, you said? Yes. Nero was 13. Archie, you said 20? 20, yes. Okay. Alaric? 22. 22. Okay, and then um, uh, Andre got a seven. No. Oh. Okay. Um. Okay. What? Why did I? Sorry, I I. <laughs> I uh, didn't set this up the way I thought I did here. Uh, oops. Um. Okay, there we go. Okay, now there we go. Okay, Andre got a seven. And Nira got 13. Amethyst got um, 6. Uh, Archie got 20. 
And Alaric got 22. Um, but you guys um, uh, are surprised. Um, as you, um, you know, as you're kind of inspecting this, um, uh, you know, this, this strand of web, you hear sort of a hissing, clicking sound, and over no. the roof of, uh, I'm putting the roof back just to indicate, over the peak of the roof, you see a giant spider no. up on the roof of that one. <laughs> and uh, you also hear some smaller hissing sounds. Um, as a swarm of smaller spiders emerge, uh, two swarms emerge from all the bushes here. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, and uh, you guys are surprised with this first uh, this this first round here uh, because you alerted them, and now they're coming after you. Oopsie. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, let's see. Um, Thanks, Archie. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one uh, comes straight. Uh, okay. Uh, it basically is heading straight for you, Archie, because you are the one that tugged on its web. I am its prey. And it climbs up over the wagon and is going to try to bite you. Uh, it gets an 18. Does not Ooh. hit. Does not hit. AC 20. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. And the t little swarms of spiders um, are also kind of uh, heading through there. Um, <laughs> one of them, uh, they're actually going to swarm past you, uh, Archie. No! And one, is, one each is going to uh, Amethyst and to Nira. Um, I want to eat your head. He's going to eat me. They just swarm right around your feet, Archie, like they're told to ignore you somehow. Like, doesn't seem normal spider behavior for them to walk past a target and attack something behind it. But that's what they do. Um, so, uh, Nira, uh, these spiders start to swarm all over you, and uh, the attack is they get a 17. <laughs> Oh man! Then I gotta do. Can I? So even if I'm surprised, can I still like react? You and can use still do a reaction. You just didn't get a turn this round, but you do get a reaction. Right. But the 17 hits. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you take 13 da piercing damage. God. Um, from all of these spider bites all over you, but you can use your 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 reaction. Right. Uh, let's see. So that's forty-four. Okay. So then, yeah, I will use Wrath of the Storm. Mm -hmm. So that's two D eight lightning or thunder damage. So I'm going to go with. So okay. So here's my question. Since I'm doing lightning damage if i if i do lightning damage does mm -hmm. that could that also be like coupled with thunderbolt strike or no um yeah i mean the thunderbolt strike is when you do lightning damage right yes yep so i'm gonna do that wrath of the storm with lightning okay. damage and then that'll push them up to yeah. 10 feet away so, so roll your you'll roll your damage then let's see 2d8 uh six Okay. Um, so basically, um, as these things are swarming all over you, you feel this rage of electricity <laughs> expel through your, your skin, and a whole bunch of these little spiders just go pop, 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 pop <laughs> off of you. Um, <laughs> there's still a whole bunch around your legs, though, but yeah. you, you definitely killed several of them that they just those spiders were just and uh and i'll i'll actually say that the ones that uh you know there's the the ones that were around your feet do briefly kind of kind of rush away a little bit 
Um, all right, uh, Amethyst, the ones that are coming at you um, roll a 12, which I think is not enough. Uh, my armor class? Yeah. Yeah, it's 18. All right. Because you do have your shield up, you said so and everything. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the shield in this case is not specifically what does it, but I would say that you being a little bit further back from seeing, you saw these things coming a little better, better, and you were able to kind of be quicker on your feet to keep them from climbing up all over you. But so now we're back at the uh, top of the initiative. Um, uh. Alaric, you definitely see the, saw this giant spider and you heard various screams. Um, so you're aware stuff's going on. It's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> trap door spider must be. I don't know. It's not a trap door. It's not a trap. Um, uh, well, it's a perfect time to try something new. So I reach forward my hand and summon the crossbow. Okay. And then I'll fire the crossbow at the thing. Okay. See if that works. There are allies within five feet of it. Yes. Awesome. I uh, get a 20 to hit. 20 hits. And because there's allies nearby, it's sneak attack, strangely enough. Yep. <laughs> uh, that makes it uh, 11 points of damage, piercing. Hang on just a second. Wang. I'm going to check something because I definitely wrote it down wrong in my little notes here. You and the crossbow bolts. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I hit it and everything. The, the well, you definitely hit it, but the number <laughs> of uh, hit points it has in my notes is definitely not right. Four digits? That doesn't seem right. Oh, what, yeah, five? Um, okay, you did 11 um, damage yep. to it. Okay. Uh, huh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Then I'll move closer to it. Okay, yeah, so you definitely see it, it kind of twitch in response to taking one of these uh, crossbow bolts, but you can also see it's actually got a fair, fairly thick exoskeleton, so although you did damage it, it looks like a pretty tough critter. Um, so that was 11. Is that everything with your crossbow and the sneak attack? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, you um, know what? I'm going to stay back here because this thing's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, Archie, your turn. You got a giant right. spider in your face, and although yes. you're probably not paying attention, you've also got a lot of these little spiders all over him. All over. <laughs> Big spider, short sword and shield, attack, attack, attack. Mm -hmm. all right. So long sword, um, attack to the spider. Mm -hmm. First attack. Thirteen. That's a miss. Second attack. It's another 13. Yeah, you, uh, your first strike goes wide as it kind of rears back um, on its uh, you know, hind legs. And then as it uh, comes down again, you get kind of just a glancing blow that just sort of slides along its exoskeleton without really doing any damage. It's my bonus action. I'll go ahead and mark it with Hunter's Mark. Okay. It is Hunter's Marked. <laughs> I have my little, where's my little thing for it? Uh, I've lost it now. That's all right, we'll remember. So um, it is that, okay, all right. Now it is the swarm of spiders turn here going after you again, Amethyst. Okay, fun. It gets a 10, um, though. Looks like you're still able to evade it as these uh, little yeah. spiders are trying to crawl all over you, but they're not being able to... They're starting to get up on your feet and stuff, but you, you, they've not been able to find any exposed flesh to bite. Um, all right, the big spider is is um, is going to try to uh, uh, attack you again, Archie. Bring it. And it gets a 9. So yeah, once again, um, it uh, you know you're you were able to bat its chalicera away with your shield. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Nira, your turn. I'm calling the lightning because we're gonna burn this mother down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Make so it rain. The call lightning spell is that what it is again? Yes. 
Okay, so um, you summon the power of the storm. Clouds form overhead, storm cloud. And you're out in the open, not in these caves anymore where there's no room. It's like, <laughs> I'm unleashed. <laughs> it gets, gets dark above you as this enormous storm cloud forms straight uh, overhead. And, um, uh oh, gonna yeah. rain. <laughs> and then you summon Hit the power the of the one. lightning. You're going at the big one, and I assume you're going to try to target it so it hits the the uh, the big one and, and nothing else? I mean, because if... So it's everything within five... Five, five feet you know of that point. Well, within five feet of that point, because it doesn't say within five feet of the creature, so I, I just still always feel like that's how it should work, but that's not what it says, so... Yeah. Um, so five feet of that point. So yeah, if you want to target it here, it won't hit like Archie or anything. Yep. Okay. And yep. I would also like to use destructive wrath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with Thunderbolt Strike, will that push it back? Or <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Ten feet. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Um, so so uh, it makes a dexterity 10, saving so. throw, and it gets a 16, which I think is is good enough to be a success. Is that against the spell save DC? Yeah. Yes. 14, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it succeeds on its dexterity saving throw, so it'll still take half. Um, mm -hmm. and, the, and so it was going to take eight? Um, no, I was using the, uh, it's 3d8. But with destructive wrath, okay, it would yeah. be or three d ten, excuse me. So it would be thirty points. So okay, with half, so it's it'll 15. take fifteen then. Um, and the rule is still when you do lightning damage, that's what it takes, right? The 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 thunderbolt yep. strike. Okay, so yep. it takes uh, it takes fifteen lightning damage. Does not like that at all. <laughs> um, and it is blasted back off of this. Um, wagon and actually briefly lands on its on its back but then it's able to flip itself back over and so gross so gross get it off <laughs> <laughs> all right boy, it boy. is andrie's turn um and she's gonna fire her short bow at it um from where she is Uh, she gets uh, <laughs> one hit and one miss. Uh, she does nine damage um, uh, with her as she sinks an arrow um, into the side of its thorax, and it and it kind of hisses. And you, and you guys can see it; it's it's significantly injured now, but still looks really mad. Um, Amethyst, your turn. So, to the little critters, do I treat them like one beastie? Yeah, essentially. Okay. From a mechanical standpoint, yeah. But it is a swarm, so essentially they are in your space. Okay. So, I want to um, use uh, poison spray, which is one of my cantrips. Mm hmm Yep. Um, yeah. Creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, they got an 11, so I think that probably doesn't... Um, uh, I want my constitution, or no? No, it would be your DC. Okay. Oh, that's... Um, spell save DC. I'm sorry. To, I'm still trying to figure out this D&D &D so beyond if you're form. looking on your, um, your spell thing where it says poison spray, mm -hmm. um, it'll say con 14 right there. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Con fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, they they do not succeed on their on their um, uh, their save. So that's two d twelve poison damage. Um, I think it's one d twelve. Um, no, you're level five, so it, uh, <laughs> it's two d twelve yeah. now. Yep. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh -huh. Your poison has leveled up with you. Six. Six. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so a couple of these spiders um, shrivel up and and kind of, yeah. you know. So yeah, you uh, you take out about a third of them. You, you'd guess. Cool. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so next uh is the swarm of spiders that is was going after you nira and they're going back at you again they're gonna try to crawl all over you and attack you again uh they didn't learn the lesson the last time because the ones that <laughs> got zapped by you were the ones that died so the rest of them say what happened we don't know let's try it again within uh five feet i can use my protection yeah shield you can protection make them attack it to give them disadvantage you sure can. Um, so that's a 14 with the disadvantage, which. Yeah, my, my AC without shield is 15. So because I don't okay, think so I yeah. said. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we'll say that they're starting to swarm back in your direction. Um, and Archie kind of at the last second kind of uses his shield like a scoop that sort of scoops them, scoops them away. <laughs> 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 Um, all right, we're back up to you, Alaric. All right, so the big one's on his back over there. Right? Um, it has gotten right side up again, but it, it did get blasted off of the wagon. All right, I'm going to try something. Uh, the wagon's on its side, right? Yep. So I'm going to move around to the to be hidden by the wagon. Okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to hide now all that right. I'm out of its view. Make a stealth check. That is a 16. Yep. And then I'm going to pop around the corner with the crossbow. All right. Now with advantage. Okay. I hear you. Uh, 24. Yeah, that hits. Oop. And because I have advantage, sneak attack. I will push yep. that forever. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's, that's what rogues are supposed to do. Yes. That's like the whole mechanic of the class. <laughs> it's hide and hit what I've been doing for four years. Yeah. Um, yeah, 13 points of damage. Okay. Um, 13. Okay, yeah. Um, as this thing absorbs another crossbow bolt, it is looking like uh, one of, you know, two of its right side legs are kind of moving a little stiffly now. It, it definitely is looking significantly wounded it does seems like you guys are way tougher than it was expecting man i wish i had one of these things in the mines <laughs> just the crossbow <laughs> although arguably you suspect the gigantic hardened metal um golem may have been more resistant mm -hmm. to crossbow bolts than a spider he's got a little wisdom it seems like a good <laughs> idea um archie your turn Oh, we lost Archie. Temporarily, Archie is missing his turn. That's okay. What um, the heck? He's holding his action. <laughs> uh, um, uh, so the... Okay. Uh, <laughs> the that wasn't a euphemism. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the swarm of spiders that is around you, Amethyst, is attacking again. Um, hmm. uh, and it gets a six. These spiders are having a hard time biting you, Amethyst. Yay. Um, <laughs> she likes spiders. They're her, her pals. <laughs> uh, Do I get a reaction? Or no, they missed me. Because I've got those bracers of the thorn. Um they, they haven't yeah, they haven't they haven't landed a hit yet, so Okay. Okay, it's when an enemy hits. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Archie, we, we we went past your turn, so what what's up? Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um I will uh Attack the spiders in front of Amethyst. Okay. Swinging my hefty longsword. Oh, damn. First one's a nine. Second one's a 20 crit. Um, so Ooh. the nine misses. So 27. But yeah. The, uh, the, the crit definitely hits. It's an automatically hit anyway, but uh, yeah. So <laughs> go ahead and roll your damage on, on that one. Is eight points of damage. Is that with the doubling of the dice? Oh no. Sorry, yeah, uh, that it would be. Don't uh, neglect your ten your points of damage. damage. Uh, all right, yeah. So you are able to, um, with your sword, chop up a bunch of little spiders. 
Mechanics work <laughs> weird sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Uh, so now it is the big spider's turn, and you see it crawl back up onto this building, and it looks like, and then it goes to the the other side of the roof, and you lose sight of it from where you are. Um, so it has gone out of sight over the top of that building. Uh, you chicken running away. Um, all right, Nira, your turn. That thing wasn't nearly on fire enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Sh I don't want to... I don't want to... Dispel the storm. Because it's concentration. So, um... Looking up... Hold on. <laughs> I need to see if... Uh, I think the call lightning needs it. to be a point you can see if that's what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, so I can't use it, but um, but I can use Sacred Flame on these little guys. Yes. <laughs> and not lose uh -huh. the storm in case the thing comes back. So. Yep, maintain concentration on call <clears throat> lightning. Yep. Yes. So are you casting it on the ones that are on you? Yeah. All right. Those guys. I'm trying to now, think like how that so, mechanically that makes sense, but I'm gonna I I'll say I, I buy it that you you don't hurt yourself because with they your aren't own sacred flame. necessarily on me because Archie blocked them. So Fair. Like yeah, them that's away. true. Yeah, we'll say that too. Yeah, we'll say that they are <laughs> headed back towards you. Um, okay. Actually, um, and you know, as you do this, this doesn't interrupt what you're doing, but they they actually seem like they've they've stopped advancing. But you I don't care. They're going to die anyway. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so are, okay. So I'm I'm a little six now. Okay. So my my damage actually. Well, increases. they still make a dexterity saving throw, right? Right. Huh. That's a crit fail. That's a, that's a, they rolled a one. <laughs> All right, on their dexterity saving throw. So yeah, All go right. ahead and roll your um your your double um. Double or uh, or not—it's not a crit. Never mind. But your your sacred flame damage, which yes, should be okay. the, uh, the level so, five version. Yeah. Okay. So nine. Uh, all right. Yeah, you take out another half of what's left, meaning this swarm of spiders is maybe only about a uh, thirty percent of what it once was. So gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew's turn. Um, she's going to kind of run over this way just to get, try to get a sense of what's happening over there. Um, and then she says, I don't see it. So she, she is looking off in this direction. I don't see it. She says. Who did um, what? What did, were you asking what she said or I? I, I'm just kidding. Okay, I, I didn't quite hear you, so I wasn't sure if you were asking me a question or... I said, okay. who the what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Uh, Amethyst, your turn. Who's injured? Um, Nero took some uh, spider bites. But there's also still these spiders that are kind of right. around you. I'm... Um... Other than using my shoe, I guess I'll use poison spray again because I can't really cast anything else. Yeah. I love the idea of you using your shoe, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm okay. So they I make am. another Constitution saving throw. They get a ten, so that's not going to do it. So go ahead and roll your two d twelve again. Ooh, twelve. Yeah. All the rest of those spiders are dead. They all. Oh. Curl up and 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 die. And my shoes are still clean. They are. <laughs> well done, you. Um, so uh, as you guys watch, it is the spider's turn now, and this swarm, which had been acting very cohesively, um, all of a sudden just seems to disperse. The spiders just go every which way, and it's essentially no longer a functional creature. The spiders just kind of. Scatter. Yuck. That was we the check much <laughs> scary. Can we check each other's ears, please? <laughs> Spider egg sacks. Not kidding. <laughs> Do as you like. 
Andrea's going to kind of check around the way and she's going to come back and say that uh, she's pretty sure that the big spider ran off into the tall grass somewhere. Well, shoot. I mean, I was going to. So let's chop down this web in front of us and check out that um, storage room, storage place. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want to see if there's any the more spiders shop. hiding in the trees? Because that's where they came from, right? I've still got the storm up. I haven't dropped it. Just I didn't FYI. see where they came from. <laughs> they just came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, the one came from over the building, and if it's going to come back, it'll have to come through the door. So we'll see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's right. a trap door um, over there in the storage or the the, I guess, processing area. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So we'll say one. that you guys now very aware of it and probably going like this with your. <laughs> as you as you walk through this space, you do find several more strands of web, but you're able to, um, you know, they, they they take some doing. They don't break just normal spider web style, right. but, uh, you, you know, with a little of effort, you're able to uh, take care of them and not have too much more trouble. Were you just I, yeah, going into sure. here or? Um, some Probably some sacred flame burning most of those webs down at the spectrum. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. It smells like burning. <laughs> As you move your way in more into the center of this area, you you do see that there is this this other small building that's kind of over over behind this one. They did say there were two humans around here, correct? They might have hid in the basement. Mm, yeah, two human yeah. Heads. I think we should head in and close the doors. Well, do we want to search that other building back there, too? Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm one at a time. <laughs> Maybe, that yeah. Maybe that spider blew out of the floor. That's, that would explain why the trap door is all busted. Do spiders blow out of floors? Hmm. I haven't had too many big spiders like that. They also don't usually explode. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for house spiders. <laughs> more spider than this was not a like typical spider <laughs> it's still out there <laughs> well still we can check that other building make sure that the <laughs> folks aren't just sort of cowering inside it's all right, all right kind of, kind of so you go and uh check this other building and uh you discover inside it is uh like a glass blowing workshop and you suspect it it seems to be where they make bottles of the type you saw crates of in the other building there's a just like a furnace and some barrels of water and uh some uh sand and molds and glass blowing equipment so would anybody object to just playing with the glass blowing supplies for the rest of the episode and not doing anything else <laughs> it looks fascinating <laughs> talk about absolutely again. fascinating <laughs> I'm just kidding, I guess. <laughs> and then so behind here, there's like a coal <laughs> hopper for feeding the furnace. And so that that's all that's up there, though. There, you don't see any like people. That. All right. So I'm going to go into this other building here. All right. Start looking around. I would imagine you guys maybe are all doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as all of you are now in this uh, this building, it seems like a work building. Uh, as before, there's crates full of uh, a red li uh, these bottles with a red liquid. And uh, all, n although you certainly were aware of the color of the berries before, um, and the, the liquid that's in the bottles isn't quite the same red, but it's obviously derivative of it and maybe mixed with something. But the mixture and the shape of these bottles, they look just like healing potions. Score. <laughs> but wait. So, so are they healing? I would looks like yeah. Well, but here's the thing: I have a little fancy magnifying glass that can <laughs> do it. Hey. Do it. Whip it out. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm going to those bottles over there in the crates that are yeah. finished. Mm -hmm. I am going to take my magnifying glass and check it out. Uh, okay. So you tap into the identifying magic. Uh, that is embodied within this magnifying glass, and you determine that they are, in fact, potions of healing with an asterisk. Mm -hmm. um, these have clearly not been made in the approved way, and you suspect that 
uh, although they will function as healing potions, that there may be uh, unexpected side effects. Side effects. <laughs> we got knockoffs, y'all. <laughs> So you get healed, but you also turn into, I don't know, a, a bear. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to take one. I'm going to pull one. Yeah. So there, there are four boxes of six each um, in these crates right here. And then these, these vats seem to have, you know, intermediate stages of the liquid. And then this table here looks like where they apply labels and add corks to the bottles so what kind of side effects do you know well we could find out like i'm, I'm down 13 so <laughs> well let me give right, it a try but we do have a giant spider somewhere so maybe we could just you know play with it later <laughs> and, I'll, and i'll hit you with cure wounds <laughs> well there's also i mean i'm all for floor. fun yeah actually i look down the hole in the floor and say it's okay yeah. spider's gone yeah, so what you, um, yeah, so looking down, it is definitely dark down in, in that uh, trap door. As I mentioned, there's um, scorch marks all around it, and the trap door was clearly blown open like there was an explosion beneath it. Um, and what you see actually on the floor underneath, there's a, there used to be a ladder, and it's ruined now, um, and then there's a bunch of broken glass. Uh, on the bottom. No, oh, <laughs> nobody inside though. It's a shallow or a small. Well, or it no, it definitely opens up into a bigger space that you can't oh. see from up here. Oh. Uh, how how it, deep? Is so it? it it looks like this side, this side, and this side. There's you can see the wall go down to the floor, but in this direction, it it opens up into a passage that goes somewhere else, a tunnel. Hmm. None of this seems particularly nefarious. Healing potions. I want to try a healing potion. All right. I want to take drink one. a healing potion. Cool. I'm doing it. Uh, you beat me All to right. it. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Is it bad? I just want to try it just for the side effects. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saving mine for later. Um, okay, so uh, these are standard potion of healing. And so you roll 2d4 plus 2, and you get that many. Uh, HP back. Six plus two, you said? Yep. So eight. Uh, all right. Um, and also, please roll percentile dice for me. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ominous. So it's like the Wand of Wonder then, I guess? <laughs> for side effects. <laughs> so five... And nine, so 59. Uh, okay. Um, you are suddenly surrounded by monsters. Oh, no. <laughs> they, 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 some of them are like more giant spiders that have come back in. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, just like zombies. And they're all gross. And they're just all around you. I'm going to run. <laughs> just going to take uh, off. I, they're surrounding you. There's nowhere to run. Um, okay. Then in that, case, so. <laughs> in that case, in that case, I will have to use Thunder Wave to push them all back. Oh, Jesus. All right. Um, so you cast Trip Thunder Wave. Um, Everyone else, I would <laughs> gather that you're probably standing around Nira to see what happens when she takes this thing, right? So everyone makes a strength saving throw, I believe. Um, I'm looking for it. <laughs> it's too funny. Um, constitution. Uh, okay, so everyone uh, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, nope. 21. All right, so I think that's probably a success for uh, Amethyst. Um, I only rolled a four for damage, so. <laughs> that's be fun. Uh, is that a the thunder wave? Oh, that's a spell, not a cantrip, right? So it doesn't. It's yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a spell. 
<laughs> I think I'm going to be taking a dunk in the pool here in a moment. <laughs> My total was six. Uh, all right. Uh, so, Amethyst, you take three uh, force damage, thunder damage. Um, three. Uh, Alaric, you take six and, are, and definitely are thrown head over heels into this vat of solution, uh, which will resolve in a moment. Uh, Archie? 19. 19? Okay, so you take three and are not pushed. Um, Andre. Um, Andrew I don't feel 13. guilty about this now. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Andrea is uh, shoved out, out of this um, and into this strand of spider web. And she's like, oh, man. <laughs> um, so uh, roll a d10, uh, Nira. Two. Uh, okay. So um, you have now with this thunder wave... Uh, a couple of these monsters that were all around you were blown back, and so you have a, you have a, a direction that you could you could go to flee now. Yep, running, all screaming. Right, yeah. <laughs> all right, I would say you probably you you just you just you see the rest of you see Nero just take off screaming in this direction. Right on, um, Alaric. You uh, have just been dunked in a bunch of this red stuff, so. I would say if you were down any hit points, you're not anymore, but please roll some percentile dice for me. Uh, I did have Dwarven Resilience. I don't know if that matters or not. That's reverse poison. Uh, uh, yeah, I, so I am I I am aware, but yes, go ahead and okay. roll them. <laughs> so, sorry, roll a percentile? Yeah. All righty. Let us see what this turns out to be. All the cool kids are doing this. Uh, 91. 91. Um, you are just immediately out like a light, just oh, unconscious. Glub, glub, glub. Yeah. Um, so I think the rest of you standing there would see that he falls basically head first into this vat and kind of thrashes for a moment and then kind of just stops. <laughs> stops Whoa. thrashing. So he is definitely head under the surface of this solution right now. So I would run over to pull him out. All right. You, you, you pull him out and he, is, he seems to be out like a light. Um, roll a uh, 1d10, uh, Mark, or Alaric. Nine. Uh, nine. Uh, all right. Yep. You are unconscious. <laughs> so, and uh, Nira has fled. We can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nira, you don't know where your friends were, but it seems obvious that the monsters must have gotten them. <laughs> of course. Did we see anything other than no, Star... Uh, no, basically, right. you you guys were all curious what the side effects might be. And she said, I'm going to try it. And she drinks one. Feels good for a second. <laughs> then her face just turns to horror. She screams, casts <laughs> thunder wave on all of you, and then runs away. I think she should run that off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, are the rest of you kind of pursuing or... Nope. All right. Uh, well, Alaric's not, uh, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, uh, she's got sacred flame. I'm not going near that shit. Uh, Nira, after a couple of minutes, you kind of feel your head beginning to clear a little bit. Huh. Oh, wait, what? And you realize you have just run, you know, about 150 yards away from this farm, just out into the tall grass. <laughs> And yeah, then you hear was, the hiss of, an, of a giant spider. <laughs> and you see it's actually the one that you chased away from the farm. You have just run right back into where it had fled. <laughs> I'm oh, pretty shit. sure this one is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is attacking Girl. you. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll cast Guiding Bolt on uh, it. Well, so you, you will get to in a second. It gets to yeah. attack you first because you ran right into it. Into it. Please <laughs> <laughs> plant. Uh, it gets an 18 with its for its roll. Oh, Jesus. Yikes. Okay. Um, so it does. Ooh, okay. Um, uh, it's not a good sign. It does 12 piercing damage. Um, and then make a constitution saving throw. Let's... 
<clears throat> uh, 13. Uh, okay. Fortunately, you, you feel the, the poison that this thing injects into you, uh, attempting to overwhelm your system, but you're, you're able to fight off the worst of it, but you still are going to take, uh, you're still going to take eight poison damage. Oh. I can use Wrath of the Storm though, right? To, yes. uh, okay. Yes. Do that then. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you go ahead and, uh. And do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I lost the uh, the thing that is two D eight. Okay. Uh, fifteen. All right, fifteen. Um, it it squeals in pain as it kind of recoils from the lightning that you have uh, just inflicted on it. Uh, it and looks, it also gets pushed. Yeah, and it you, it shoves back, and uh, it looks like it was... It, if you could interpret its body language, it, you would get the sense that it was thinking, I was already running away, and you chased me down. <laughs> this is terrible. I just want to get out of here. But you, you have the opportunity to attack it now if you want. Yeah, Guiding Bolt. All right. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go find it now. <laughs> I think you probably do make an attack roll for that, right? Uh, make a range spell attack. Yep. So, I'm trying to think, do I get spell attack bonus right? Yeah. Nineteen. Yeah, that hits. Sweet. Okay. That is four d six. Twelve, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, you kill it. <laughs> Good. It is a glittery spider on its back with all its legs curled up, <laughs> covered with glitter. It was totally worth it. All right, so uh, Alaric, um, you are having a dream, Alaric. Um, it's a good <clears throat> dream. It's very pleasant. What is it? Oh, uh, probably when I was a lot younger uh, and ranging here and there and hearing some of the tales and sitting at the, the front row of the alehouse as the bards explain this crazy story about uh, uh, about uh, a mountain that was conquered by one person. Oh. Um, the rest of you, uh, Archie and Amethyst and Andrea, are looking down at Alaric, who has got kind of a goofy smile on his face, and he's just... There's a mountain. There's <laughs> go mountain, go. Yeah. So I'm going to look out the door. <laughs> I'd like to look out the door after Nira and right. see if she's so, know, calling for help or casting spells at me or anything. <laughs> uh, I would guess that, uh, so Nira, after taking out this uh, spider, uh, what what is your, uh, you know, are you making the walk of shame back to the farm here or what? <laughs> I'm gonna. Okay, so <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> uh, on, incidentally, girl. you definitely let go of the concentration on the call light. Right, when, I when figured as much. So <clears throat> before I I leave the uh, spider corpse, I would like to rip a piece of it off to bring back as a trophy. All right. <laughs> nice. Do you it's have like a leg? Snap. What, what piece? <laughs> <laughs> it is a spider. Uh, just just like a leg. So like. All right. What, whatever falls off when I smash it with the Warhammer. Sure. <clears throat> you uh, squash it and one of the legs kind of, uh, you're able to pull it free. It's about five feet long. <laughs> okay, I'm going to drag it back with me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and not over the shoulder or drag it no, back? That's, <laughs> no, that thing's right. huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Plus you get so, uh, yeah, you the rest of you guys see um, Nira, uh, you know, walking back into camp, uh, dragging a giant spider leg behind her. Found it! Got it! Everybody's safe. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. Leg on the floor. <laughs> there you go. How about, how about you cast a heal since you injured us? <laughs> you got one of those too, right? <laughs> um, somewhere, yeah. Um, you all right there? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I will cast Prayer of Healing. I can find it. Next time you could just say, hey, I'm going to go chase down that spider. Oh, uh, yeah, but this was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 2d8 plus the spell casting. Okay. Uh, eight plus... Plus wisdom, that's three. So, eleven. Right. Is that that's for everybody? Is yeah, that... so anybody that was hit, you get eleven points back. <laughs> right. How much are you down Oops. still? Um, I, I'm, I'm okay with you not drinking more healing potion. <laughs> <laughs> I am down six now. All right, well, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds before you get excited again. <laughs> well, I, uh, are you still down six even after? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Because I, I got I got hit with the yeah yeah I'll cast uh, cure wounds which is eight plus that thing <laughs> that I always forget the spell casting modifier yeah so that's going to be your wisdom well it also should um, show up again like uh, on your um, I, on your, uh, bleh, you know, the thing, the thing, right? The, that thing, the uh, your, your <laughs> well, sheet. When you look at your spells, your sheet, your spell yeah. stuff. Um, it should, it should have that information in it. So I rolled an eight plus my spell casting ability modifier, and that's what I can't find on this new sheet yet. Your, your spell casting ability modifier is your wisdom, because your, your, okay. um, your wisdom is that. But uh, okay, uh, so fourteen. Yeah. Um, but if you, for example, when you look at your spell list, if you mm -hmm. expand Cure Wounds, it'll mm -hmm. say 1d8 plus 3. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> cleverness. Mm -hmm. Righteous. All right. Okay, so that was worth 14. Well, I needed 6, so. But thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Uh... At this point, I think Alaric just kind of probably wakes up suddenly, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a terrible taste in my mouth. <laughs> oh, my watch what you put in it. Uh, I think I put half that barrel in it, actually. Yeah, uh, you are still kind of dripping with this stuff, by the way. Is it staining? It's sticky. <laughs> oh, it's kind of your color. Yeah, I mean, my. My beard and my hair, sure. You're you're, you're a copper so beard, you know, so then you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not usually this sticky. I'm gonna have to and I wring out the beard to try to get some of the <laughs> Okay, wet red shirt, go see what's in that hat. <laughs> no, Don't be beard. worried about having a red shirt now. It's all right. Don't worry. Yeah, everything else is red. Why not? I was gonna look for dyes in this town anyway, so I guess I got a free one. Yeah. There you go. All right, so uh, because the, the ladder hole. is ruined, uh, you're going to have to hop down. It's about 10 feet. I can probably climb We down. have ropes. Yeah. 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 If can you guys climb. sort of like affix a rope to uh, make the uh, climb easy, then no roll necessary. Are you you're all we going down? we got lots of rope. <clears throat> yeah. Uh -huh. I guess I'm going down front just in case anything jumps out and bites. All right. Let me switch to our other map. Uh, the cellar map. Hey, we Please made it no to more the spiders. <laughs> All right. Nope, nothing down here. Let's turn around and leave. <laughs> All right. Let's put Alaric up front. And then the rest of you are crowded around behind you. Uh, you, it's very crowded in this little hallway until you sort of proceed further. I would imagine that they're kind of coming behind you. But what you see mm -hmm. as you emerge into this cellar, um, you have uh, dark vision, uh, but it, it is dark down here. So those of you who have dark vision are fine. Uh, and those of you who need goggles should apply them at this time. You know, it's like that part <laughs> in the movie, you know, please place your 3D glasses please. on now. <laughs> yeah. um, so... One of the, so the first thing that you see in this room is that it's clearly an alchemical workshop. In the back here, you see a big cauldron, uh, a couple of workbenches, a lot of fancy glassware with various colored liquids. 
in the back. Um, but what you also see is a lot of broken glass. Um, now that you're closer, it looks like a lot of those potion type bottles shattered on the ground. It's kind of all over the, the floor in here. But what's also all over the floor is you realize that there's just a very thin layer of this kind of goopy purple slime covering almost everything. Uh, the floor in this whole space. You can see it on the map here. Yeah. Um, and then you can see over to the side here, this is sort of a slightly smaller area uh, where it's a little bit recessed uh, here, meaning it's a little bit lower, like there's a step down into this space. Um, but then around here, there's two hallways that have both been barricaded in different ways. This way looks like it has some sort of a, like a steel grating uh, with uh, just some boards kind of propped up against it. There's still a few holes here and there, but it's definitely a barricade. Over here is a strange, it, it's, it's almost like a, like a rat's nest of just any little bit and bob that might go into there, but it's been carefully constructed as to leave no openings at all. But it's all just made of like wood and scraps and any random little thing that might have been on the floor but all very carefully arranged to fill the whole space. Are the walls think, dirt? Um, uh, yeah, the walls are dirt. So that, that rat's nest pile there, I think Sacred Flame might uh, be helpful. <laughs> Unless he's coming, <laughs> keeping something in we don't want to have come in. Yeah. Well, given the spiders upstairs, more than likely it was to keep something out. But Does it look like it was built from this side or the other? I guess I have to go in to find out how sticky um, is this crap. So as you guys are kind of starting to explore it, are you talking amongst yourselves as you look in, into yeah. it? Or, oh, yeah. Um, as you're, you're kind of investigating and kind of whispering to yourselves, you hear uh, a voice from back here uh, yells like, Oh, no, they're coming for me again. Go away. And then you hear uh, the sound of a bunch of um, what it sounds like a piano being dropped downstairs. Like it, it's it's and like the piano making awful noises and then a bunch of wood smashing and piano strings breaking. That's what you hear from back there. Weird. OK, we're here to help. And did you drop a piano? <clears throat> Who drops a piano? <laughs> it's all clear. Yeah. I'm gonna take a little closer look you, at that game. You're, you're not gonna fool me, spirits. I know you know that was just breaker. Spirits. Uh, um, and then uh, as uh, you you hear uh, uh, what sounds like a crowd go boo boo boo. Maybe you shouldn't um, as drop if, the you're, piano. if you're kind of stepping incidentally you asked about this stuff on the floor it's kind of more like slime than sticky yeah. but it's definitely yeah. about maybe like a half inch layer of it all I over everything like a, i look like a I child like version of a painted cartoon i'm totally they're, red they're... up top and purple on my feet <laughs> somebody's been getting high on their own supply right. <laughs> there, there's no telling what this stuff does <clears throat> don't drink it if it was gas, I could disperse it, but I cannot. <laughs> we're here to help you, Madrigal sent us. We're, we're here to help. Oh, you ain't gonna fool me like that. Them last spirits said they were from Madrigal too, and I believed them for a second until I didn't. And then you, mm. you, you hear um, what sounds like carnival music going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> and then the voice says, oh, shut up, Breaker. <clears throat> I think we got all the information we need. We could just report back to Madrigal. So, I seem to. Didn't you say she'd sent runners here? Like she'd sent she'd sent messengers before. And nobody's come back. With right. Any reports? Mm. What if this guy back here has been affected by whatever this is on the floor, mm -hmm. and is convinced? Um, I mean, maybe he was dabbling in the healing potions. I don't know. Um, can convinced that these messengers that have come before were evil spirits meant to harm him rather than. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. We should probably tell her that after we go check out the lake. 
I mean, it wore and, off for you, right? So of course, but him. They've got all this stuff on the floor. It's constant exposure. Who knows what fumes it's giving off? I don't think it hurts to try and help mm. the guy. I mean, that sucks for them. Let's see what's going on and help out someone in need. Maybe Archie. Nothing. I mean, I wouldn't pay for a job half time. He seems pretty comfy. Uh, I don't think dropping a piano sounds comfy. Looking sounds at fun. looking at the goo on the floor, um, like an arcane check or something, yeah, to um, see if it's got magical properties, like if it's a biological thing or... Sure, yeah, make an ar arcana check. Grip jelly. <laughs> Uh, natural 20 hookers. Uh, yeah, so you look at it. Plus five. <laughs> you have never encountered anything precisely like this before. But you realize as you look at it that it does seem to not be entirely inert. Like it, it twitches and bubbles in various little spots. Um, and you see all of the alchemical supplies and stuff in the background, and you see it seems very likely that they have inadvertently created something weird. What happens if I burn it? I'm standing in this stuff. Don't light it on fire. <laughs> Y'all can't fool me. I know you're here for my alchemical secrets. So I want to cast a spell magic on him. On what? The void, the guy. Where is he? You don't know. You just hear him yelling from somewhere. Well, my range is 120 feet. You Does it have you to be? You can't see him. Mm-hmm. So dispel mm -hmm. magic. I think you have to be able to see what you're casting it on. Uh, you still have the the sun water range. Can you no. still? Some, you don't have that. No, I didn't. I didn't have that one this time. Didn't seem necessary if we were heading to the lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It just says within range. It doesn't say within sight like some of the others do. But um, I'll, well, it's your call. On, let's see. Um, uh, it does say a creature within range. It seems like it. That seems weird. Like that you wouldn't be able. Like that. You I know. Cast it on someone in another room. I, you know, I'm still going to rule that you, without even being able to know where he is. Okay. Um, you know, it would be one thing to say, you know, you, you've not even laid eyes on this guy yet. So I, I'm going to say that you, you can't yet cast okay. spell magic. I had to try the easy button. No, I'm hey, sorry. I, no, I, I, I am, <laughs> the, your, this is creative use of your spells. Right. Now. Over to uh, check the, the grate. Okay. Right. So um, you make your way, squish, 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 squish. Oh, um, man, I got to get in the boots. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you, uh, is everyone else staying just huddled in the little hallway here? or? Yeah, for now, I think. Okay. I'm kind of blocked, so if they don't I'm, move, I don't move. I'm going to be kind of closer to to Mark. Oh, right. Mark. Like, like here? Yeah. Um, Andrea is sticking with you, uh, Archie. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Alaric, as you are examining this grate um, through some of the holes in it, you catch uh, just the fleeting glimpse of a, a humanoid figure that ducks back around the corner when he sees you uh, looking. And he, he just says, oh, you're forming new shapes. Oh, this is a man. This is this is not good. This is not good. You need to calm down. And do we drink any water recently, or anything? Water. You know, there's no water squish? down here. Just the potions. Well, that ain't good. Uh, does this look like it's locked? Uh, it's not actually even a door. It's it's <laughs> literally just it's been built out of materials. Um, you do think that uh, it seems less well go ahead and make an investigation check on it <laughs> seems solid to me i got a four, four. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah it it looks it looks like 
it uh, you you can't figure out how it would even open. It doesn't look like it was meant to, designed to open. Yeah, it's just jam something in the it's hole. It's not it's not that much designed really. Even it's kind of so there's no keyhole or knob or anything. No, um, I can't do anything about this unless we just want to tear it on down. Um, you hear a new voice just say. Um, I say, it appears that this is all but a dream, and we are merely figments of your imagination. No, I've Shut already up, Raker! <laughs> I've already dreamed today, so I don't think I'm dreaming again. Uh, who are you again? Breaker, was it? Um, are you the you, smart one? Uh, when you say, uh, I don't need to dream again, you hear a crowd going, Encore! 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 Uh, and then the one voice just says, oh, don't mind him. He's crazy. What about the rest of them? Can I speak to the rest of them? <laughs> the rest of who? The crowd. Oh, that's just Breaker. He can do that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the uh, you hear the crowd going, encore, encore. <laughs> Can I? I want to cast Sacred Flame on that other okay. pile of stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna have to step Just into cause. the slime a little bit to to get within range. Yeah, I didn't um, want to do that. But, yeah. yeah. Um. All right. You get um. Uh. You cast Sacred Flame on the barricade. It is stationary and so cannot evade. Um. And it is made of lots of sort of wooden materials, and it just ignites. Uh, into flame and it is just going up like a like like Jesus. like kindling immediately and you hear a woman scream in terror and uh, um, oh my God. Uh, and then uh, you hear uh, some muffling like or some rustling behind it and hear a couple of uh, bottles break like they're being smashed like thrown and smashed mm -hmm. against the burning barricade and then uh, uh, the voice just says What's going on over there? If you let that thing in, Breaker, I swear to God, I swear to the spirits, I'll end you. Let what thing in? We're just here to help. Oh, you're not going to fool me. You are that thing. What, Aren't the you? spider? No, 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 no. There's no more spider. Wait. What do you mean there's no more spider? You are wait, you're you're not what you're you're just trying to trick me. You're gonna go no, and try to steal my brain. <laughs> you want me to go fetch the leg? I can get that for you. And what would I want with your brain? Really? I know I all have the alchemical secrets that unlock this space time in the universe. Make shitty potions. <laughs> Trippy potions, I think. Mm -hmm. Which you've been having way too many of. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, if you guys are going to try to tell me that you're not the thing and that you're really here for some other reason, if Madrigal really sent you, what color is the sky? Depends on the day or time, really. Like blue uh, most of the time. Kind of cloudy, a little bit. Here, the uh, the uh, there's a little bit of um, uh, uh, there's more rustling and more breaking. Like bottles of liquid are being thrown to try to extinguish the fire from the other side over here. But you also hear a voice just say, "Well, I do say I believe he's gone mad." <laughs> who who do you mean? Well, that's Breaker, I told you. No, what? Who Who the hell am I talking to? Who's the other one? It's me and it's Breaker. Who, who's me? I mean, who? who's not Breaker? I'm Ifton. Oh, Did you man. know that already? You're trying to trick me. Yoda's asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible for me to climb back up and get the spider leg? Uh, yeah, you can go back and get it. 
Yeah, that would be yeah, bad. I'll, I'll say you, you go and you get it, and are you, are you bringing it over to the gate here, or what are you doing? With is it? is there a way to toss it over? Like No, because it's basically no. it's a tunnel that is totally barricaded, and this one is currently burning. It's starting to fall apart, though. It is less okay. obstructed now because you have burnt half of it. Okay, well, can I take this spider leg and like a weapon and start hacking at the <laughs> at yeah. the burning pile of and start tearing apart the remainder of that uh barricade uh with this giant spider no, leg. we are yeah. trying to convince him he's not crazy <laughs> right i was um, gonna say well they want uh, proof that there's no spider this is the proof <laughs> um what you actually see as you start doing that is on the other side um uh the other side of this barricade, you, you see um, what looks like sort of a bird person, like a humanoid bird. The face is like a giant crow, but they have two arms and legs like like a person and wearing clothes. And uh, uh, it kind of looks at you kind of quizzically and, and then throws a bottle at you. Um, Better up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. And it gets gets a fourteen. So yeah, you you sort of dodge aside as it uh, tries to throw one of these bottles in your face, um, and then it flees around the corner. Uh, it you you get the sense there's sort of a feminine shape to the body, other than this crow face. Um, and what you hear is. Um, uh, uh, what sounds like a general going, men retreat. Oh, so there's like a minor bird. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you kind of just caught a, a glimpse of this guy as he is, as he kind of ducks back around the corner. Archie's going to walk up to the back wall and kind of sniff at the flasks and stuff. All right. Make an investigation we... check. Do we still have any of that bread left? Ten. Um, unless you ate it all. Yeah, we only took a couple bites. Mm -hmm. um, so the you are not an expert with alchemical supplies, Archie, but I would imagine mm -hmm. you have at least a passing familiarity uh, enough to know that this is a fairly sophisticated set, has a lot of really specialized glassware. Um, and there's a few pieces that are broken, but a lot of it is still intact, and there's a variety of mystery liquids in them. And then this purple slime is a little bit, a little bit deeper in this lower area. Mm. Um, so I think you do probably have some of that bread left. Is there a way for me to, like, I don't know how broken this barricade is that I could either, like, push it through to the other side, like wrapped up, like, and get it to him. Um, Peace offering, right? <laughs> oh, are you coming back over? Uh, like, are you going over to this one? You're, you're tossing it over here. Yeah. Over, yeah. over there. Cause that, that one kind of toss a package over there and, uh, uh, and, and toss it over. And, and you, you see uh, a hand, like a hand on an arm, but covered with feathers, reach out and snatch it and yank it back. And then after a moment, you just, you hear what sounds like a little girl going, thank you, sir. It's so good. <laughs> well, there's more food if you guys come out. Well, I, I'm not, not coming out until you kill that thing. What thing? The spider? Because I, this is the leg right here. I have it. long dead. Oh, no. See, that's the other spider. I mean, the one that we turned into the purple slime thing. Wouldn't it be dead? Um, the slime still here. About that time, you guys notice that this <laughs> giant puddle that's all over everywhere is starting to merge and blob you couldn't have up said in that the earlier. center. And uh, pretty soon, all this slime <laughs> merges up into a giant purple slime spider. Yay! That's made of gross! <laughs> the the what? We're rolling initiative. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Go for it, Spider Slayer. <laughs> Twelve. <Get it. laughs> All right. Fifteen. Uh, Eighteen. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Lark. 17. 17. Okay. And then uh, let me... Uh, uh, let me get this. The good news uh, is we've got it surrounded. Um, all right. So, um, this, yeah, this thing is, is big and it rolls probably low. Um, it's tired. It actually gets a 13, but that's still actually low compared to most of you. Um, Andre rolls. Um, 14. Um, okay. So, um, so I think that's everyone, but Nira got above the 13. Is that right? <laughs> Great. I mean, call her out. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> not a judgment. It's just... <laughs> I know it just sounded funny. Right <laughs> so it's just Nira. <laughs> um, so Nira is the father. It was a little paralyzed <laughs> with fear. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> Thought just I took care of this already. <laughs> um, and then, uh, okay. So um, Archie, you're up first. This is a yeah, giant yeah. slime spider thing. I do not like this thing. I am going to swing my sword at it. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> First swing is a 17. It hits. This thing is big and blobby and slow. It looks shaped like a spider, but it moves like it's made of jelly, which it kind of is. Second attack is 16. Those both hit. That's it. Total damage is twenty two points of damage. Twenty two. Between both attacks. Okay. And I'm gonna hit it with my bonus action to cast compelled duel. Ooh. Ooh. Compelled so duel. So it does a uh, uh, what's it save? It's save is ah! I keep unpreparing it. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess it's probably wisdom. It's gotta be. Compared to a wisdom fourteen. Okay. Um, wisdom is not the giant blobby sp slime spider's forte, but let's see. It it has. Excellent. A I'm right there with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it actually gets a 16. Ooh. Um, His bright idea. Once in so, a while. So uh, that means that it succeeds is not... Um, I think that's what you said, right? It, it, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if it fails, does that mean it doesn't... Nothing happens? Let's see. Uh, failed save. No, it saved. Yeah. So... Uh, I think nothing nothing happens. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't think it affects it. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so you still you still s sliced but your I'm sword still through this. But I pissed it off. Um, and uh, your sword just cuts through this thing, and it cuts right through it. But it's also just kind of slimy, so it just sort of. Mm. Um, but you splat various bits of it away, uh, and you notice where some of the little spatters uh, hit the table. Um, it hisses like and a little bit of smoke mm. comes up from him. So maybe you're saying shatter is a bad idea. <laughs> More like splatter at this point. All right, it is blue. Alaric, your turn. All right. Well, uh, this crossbow is my my lady of the day, so uh, I will give it a try. Yeah. Uh, oh, nine. Oh, geez, Jan, how do you do these things? Clean that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, that, yeah, so uh, a nine oh, actually mm -hmm. hits. This thing is. Oh, it does? It's it's giant and blobby and slow moving. Whoa, okay. Uh, well, with an ally nearby, sneak attack <laughs> mm -hmm. for minimum possible possible damage at five. Um, all right. 
so it takes. Blake. Yep. Maybe. Um, and you realize actually, Archie, that um, the places where you slashed through it mm -hmm. look like it's completely back to what it was already. Ugh. Sexy. Like there, there is no <laughs> remaining. There's no evidence that there was any damage done. Um, whereas the uh, the cr you see the crossbow bolt from Alaric uh, sink into this thing, and it kind of is hissing and steaming as it dissolves into this slime. Weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good observation. Yeah. Amethyst. Well, I mean, I got a magical freaking sword, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so now, can I cast a spell magic on it? Uh, on this guy. Yeah. I only hesitate just because I hadn't like decided what should happen when you cast a spell magic on this thing. Um, okay, but yeah, go ahead and, and uh, I don't think there's any save or anything, right? It's a roll um, if the spell's over third level that she's dispelling. Yeah. Okay. Um, make um, an ability check. Wait, for each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make a an ability check using your spell casting ability. Um, yeah, so I'd say roll a d20 plus three. Ah, oh, sugar, four plus three, seven. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, so you, you feel the spell go out, and you see as this wave uh, goes across it, it sort of loses its form a little bit as it passes along, but re reforms. And you, uh, I... Archie, I, are, you are actually looking again now, and this is, I'm sorry, I'm, mm -hmm. this is a lot of stuff happening, but you <laughs> see that the, the spots where you, um, uh, the spots where you had sliced through it are actually vibrating, like they're, they're doing something strange now, mm -hmm. like they resealed, but now the, those slash places are, are vibrating in a strange way. Mm. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, um, Andrea's turn. Um, she is uh, behind it going, are you guys okay? She can't see where any of you are, but she's going to fire <laughs> her, her arrows at it. Um, um, 19 and an 8, which actually, believe it or not, still both hit. Uh, 11, 17. Yeah, so two more, two of her arrows sink into this thing and and uh they're they're creating little bits of cavity um where where they they sink in um so let's see okay um all right uh it is this thing's turn now and uh archie you see in the places where it was um where you slashed it suddenly it begins to split and it becomes two oh. half-size slime spiders. It suddenly whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, both of them are attacking you. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, is that better or worse? You got two instead of one at the moment, so I, that seems worse. Same source. Um, all right. Uh, one gets a 17. The other gets a 14. Miss, um, miss. As they s splat their s weird blobby spider faces against <laughs> your armor. Um, and they definitely, um, y you are, y you, you actually, you bat both of those away with your shield. Um, yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's what happens. Uh, so uh, now it is Nira's turn. So just for my own personal curiosity, uh -huh. should I use the spider leg as a weapon? <laughs> what, what kind of damage? Would, I'm assuming it would be bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Yes, it would be bludgeoning damage. Um, you uh, you can sw basically swing it like a club, or or you know it's not designed for this. Um, it would be just your strength modifier for to roll for attack. 
but at the same time, this thing doesn't seem terribly hard to hit. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So I'll say that your your damage with it would be two uh, d six plus <coughs> your strength. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll we'll do we'll do that. I'm gonna swing and I'm gonna hit it with the spider leg. <laughs> All right. This is um, your new preferred weapon, isn't it? <laughs> so go ahead and roll your d20 plus your strength. Um, 13. Okay, that hits. So roll the damage. Mm -hmm. You said 2d6. 2d6 plus your strength. Uh, 9. 9. Okay, so yeah, um, you are hitting... That one. Um, Got that spider love. So um, gross. You, and as you die. as you <laughs> splat this spider leg into it, uh, you you find that you actually splat some of the slime onto your own armor, where it immediately begins to hiss. Ooh. And the uh, the spider leg is also hissing, too. Um, it's like. It seems like you've you've got some of this stuff on it, and it is hissing and steaming and smoking. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that. Um, all right. So, um, okay, that makes it um, Archie's turn again. <laughs> Let me do my own check. <laughs> What's that? I said, let me do my own check here. Okay. I think I'm going to grab the vial behind me on uh -huh. the bench and throw it at the one to my left. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Um, so make a, uh, make a ranged attack roll without proficiency. So basically just D20 plus your dex. 23. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, the, you throw this bottle and it shatters um, into this thing. Um, and uh, let me think. Roll a, uh, roll a d20. Eight. Eight. Um, the, the, which, uh, what color was the flask that you threw into it? The blue one. The blue one. Um, the thing kind of ripples around the liquid and you see it start to change color a little bit and become more blue uh and all of a sudden um it's you feel like this intense cold coming from it um and you can see where its little spider legs are touching the ground it seems to be causing frost around it and uh, you hear the voice go say, that's how we got into this problem in the first place. We threw the potions oh. at the spiders. <laughs> Damn nice. it, now it's a nice spider. <laughs> well, half a nice spider. Um, incidentally, yeah, the these it did sort of split down the middle and it's essentially made sort of approximately two spider shapes. I just only had the one big token. <laughs> I, I didn't make this the half size tokens. Um okay, so next, uh Alaric, your turn. I don't think that worked. Um is the cauldron big <laughs> enough for me to hide behind? Yes. Okay. I'll move over. I'll use my bonus action to hide. Okay. And well, I'll hide your stealth check. Yes. Uh, oh, crap. Ten. Okay. And I will attempt to sneak attack with my uh, my bow, or yep. my bow, crossbow. Mm -hmm. Do I have uh, it, I'm a hidden limit? Yes. Yes? Okay. So yeah, well, it's also uh, Archie's within five feet of it, too. So. Yeah, but I don't have advantage if I'm not hidden from it. Well, but if you have an ally within five feet of it, then you get sneak attack anyway. Right, oh, but, but yes, I'm... but you want advantage, so okay, yeah. yes, you are hit. Okay. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, twenty forty hit. Uh, yep, that hits. And ten points of damage. Twang. All right. I love um, this thing. And that that's with the sneak attack and everything. Yep. All right. Yeah. So you definitely see that. Uh, this time when the crossbow bolt uh, sinks into it, it's still absorbed, but you see it sort of create little like ice-like cracks uh, along the whole uh, of it. Ha! Uh, wait, ice? When did it become ice? 
Uh, next Sorry. is Amethyst. I'm going to try um, hitting it with Produce Flame. Okay. I'm going to fireball it. <laughs> All right. And it is, you're hitting this side? Yeah, the yep. one right in front of me. Okay, Wait. go ahead and roll your attack. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the one in front of me. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Nine. Nine still hits. Oh, cool. So that's... Um, I'm going to um, do it at uh, the um, 2d8 level, I think is what it is. Well, 2d8 on. is automatic when you're, you're, right. you are level 5, so your your cantrip does yeah. 2d8. So go ahead and roll the 2d8. Uh, 10 total. Uh, okay. Um, you see that uh, this fire damage on this currently ice-like thing um, seems to have a dramatic effect and you get the sense that it has now taken twice what it, uh, might've normally taken. So it, mm -hmm. uh, you, it, it sort of, it doesn't really make any noise other than sort of squelching, but it definitely kind of thrashes around mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, all right. Uh, that is, it is now, um, uh, 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 Andrew's turn. Um, she is looking at the two of them now, and uh, uh, she's going to continue to fire out the one that seems like it's on the ropes. Um, uh, 19 and 14 both hit. Um, yeah, um, and with another two arrows, this thing um, shatters into a bunch of little blue pieces. Woo! Nice. Blue frozen pieces. You yeah. need to stomp on the blue pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, it is this other one's turn uh, now, and uh, it is uh, turning at you, Nira, for hitting it with uh, a reminder of what it once was. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. Still not sorry. <laughs> um, and it gets a 10. Um, all right, so it is your turn, Nira, but you realize that this this uh, spatter that's on you is continuing to burn and hiss. You, it, it is eating through your armor and through the spider leg. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cast Shatter on this spider. Yeah! <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Shut so it! It, uh, it makes it. Does it make a saving throw? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, Constitution. Constitution. Um, all right. Whew. Six. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, roll that damage. <clears throat> really so wishing I changed forms right now. So, because I get two of the uh, destructive wrath a day, right? I for the do you? under lightning damage, right? Uh, you it's tell two me before if, if that's right. Two then... before, two before rest. Okay. So I'm gonna do that because this right. is thunder damage, uh -huh. <laughs> and it is three d eight, so uh, twenty four. Okay. Um, this thing um, splats everywhere, and then reforms. Um, it, it's, it's very wobbly, but now everybody in this area has been splatted with this slime and is now. Wait, I thought it was. I thought it was the frozen one. It was just the one that no, was frozen. No, 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 the one. Just the I one. thought they both were. No, no I only threw one. it at the one. Oh, yeah. Okay. If, if that would change your, about. if if that would change your <laughs> action, then I'll let you. It would have it changed it because I thought they were both frozen. Yeah. No. Yeah, do the that. One. Tell it's really still the purple slime. So if if you want to take back that. Um, yeah, <laughs> please. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. I thought it, they were both frozen. Fire worked. Fire worked. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna use sacred fire, flame before. Well, fire yeah. worked on the one that was ice. Oh yeah. Hi. Right, but I don't want to. Like, if I can burn it off, that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. my my other options are, you know, to <laughs> break it apart, and that. Did mm -hmm. not. Yeah. So this one is still <laughs> the purple slime that like it started. Right, so I want to cast. I'm just going to use Sacred Flame. Okay, um, and that is uh, 
Dexterity saving throw, which is not its yep. best thing. Hmm. <laughs> Negative one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a hit. Okay. So that is a, let's see, it's 2d8 at level 5. So mm -hmm. 11, no. So Yeah, 11. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the radiant flame descends on it and scorches a bunch of it. And you see a bunch of the slime kind of bubble away. And it sort of wobbles and <laughs> thrashes around and then kind of reforms into its spidery shape. Archie, you're up. Is there another right. blue mask? Throw that. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? So is there what? another blue flask? Throw that. Yes, throw it. Yes, there is. <laughs> Nira, closer to Nira, actually. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I reach another blue one without there disengaging? There is another flask that is also attack? blue. You are not sure if it has the same stuff in it or not. <laughs> so I'll slide around to the Archie's right to grab the other one, so it doesn't get an opportunity attack. Yeah. And throw that one at it. Okay, roll a d20. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, let's see. Oh, with my dex, right? Yeah. Well, so that d20 is, plus uh, your dex to try to hit it. Yeah. That is a nine. All right, that, that hits. Um, so now roll another d20 to see what you do. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, this, uh, as this liquid, um, absorbs into it, um, roll 2d6. Eight. Um, all right. So it, uh, it takes eight damage, um, as this, this solution reacts poorly with it. And you see where it, it absorbs the liquid. It starts to bubble up and have a strange reaction and it, and it splats a lot of the, uh, the bits material away. Um, I'm sorry, how much Not did you say again? That was eight or something like that? Eight. Eight, yep. Okay, yep. All right. Uh, Not <laughs> ice, but it didn't like it. <laughs> uh, Alaric, your turn. So this one's not ice. All right. Uh, I will try to hide behind the, the uh, pot once again. Yeah. Make stealth. Uh, fifteen to stealth. Uh, That's my probably, bonus. Probably, but let's. I'll actually do the roll. Ah. Yeah, you're hidden. Okay, and then I will once again. I've got to name this thing. It's awesome. This crossbow. <laughs> uh, <hit>. Bianca. <laughs> and thirteen <laughs> damage. All right, thirteen. Bianca's not damage. a bad name. I'm gonna write that down. Well, that's from Dragon Age. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know about anybody else. Although his, uh, Alaric is kind of close to Varric, so there's like, some similarity. There. And they're both dwarves. <laughs> I am my own dwarf. <laughs> um, all right, as the crossbow bolt sinks into it, you can tell that this this thing is barely keeping its form together right now. It's trying to move its weird jello spider legs, but this thing is on the ropes for sure. It is made of ropes, sticky, gooey, <laughs> purple, um, amethyst, blue ropes, ropey purple liquid. Yeah, yeah, amethyst. So I want to try moonbeam on it because I've really been wanting to play with that spell. Okay, <laughs> moonbeam. Moon yeah. All right, let me look up moonbeam because I have not looked up that spell before. And... Does it work underground? <laughs> In a basement. Yeah. It, it, it just sacred flame can work. Why not? That? It just said it shines, shines down. down. Um, well, because yeah, there's there are some that like like call lightning specifically says if there is not room for the cloud to form that it doesn't work. But yeah, but this one does not say anything like that. Okay, so when the creature enters a spell for the first time or on a turn or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause. Okay. Um, so it's you know what i'm i think normally the way that would work is that we would wait for its turn but mm -hmm. i'm going to just have it do it now um, sweet uh, uh there's another paragraph that may be constitution relevant. saving throw mm -hmm. uh, a shakespeare 
shape changer makes it saving throw with disadvantage. I don't know if this counts uh, as a shape changer. Uh, you know what? I'll say that it does. If it fails, it also instantly reverts to its original form and can assume a different form until it leaves the spell's light. Yeah. Well, you know, th th this is not what that would normally refer to. But no, I don't. It's, right. Yeah. It, I don't, I've already seen it change its shape. Well, and though, here's so. the thing, too. Um, honestly, like, it's what you got, what you see, all of you, is this, this column of moonlight. Uh, like the brightest moonlight you've you've ever seen, full moon, super moon, uh, moonlight appears mm -hmm. filling this room, uh, shining down on this thing, and it starts to thrash and wobble and, and then basically all the all this purple slime just sort of seems to evaporate away, and it's gone. Slime Woo! one thousand defeated. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, slime spider's gone. You're just trying to trick. So me. is the ice spider. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on. really bright. I mean, it that might impress them. Do you, can can you see uh, the light, I, guys? I, um, yeah. So uh, he's saying, how, "How do I know you're not still trying to steal my secrets?" And then uh, the the bird guy has come back from around this barricade, looks at it, and then just. Um, uh, makes uh you you can see now that this sort of female bird person thing just opens its beak and what comes out is just the sound of like just pleasant forest birds like like in a forest ambiance that's very peaceful and tranquil sounding breaker are are you sure you would you wouldn't lie to me would you and, uh, and then Breaker opens his beak. Uh, the, it's actually her her beak again. And you hear the voice again once ago. I say, I think I think he's gone mad. I cast thaumaturgy to do a whole whole crowd applauding. The, you you get this wide eyed look from the uh, the uh, uh, Kenku and uh, and then. It, opens his mouth and makes the exact same noise back at you. Aww. And then gives a thumbs Aww. up. Nice. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> um she uh leads actually if you if you accompany her, she kind of beckons. Uh, yeah. Right. I'll go. Come away with me, you hear a young woman say. <laughs> uh, leads you back yeah. into this room. Um, you know, we're we're out of initiative at this point. Um, cool. Follow her on. Uh, so as you come back through this area, you see that this is was apparently a storage room. There's lots of those same bottles you saw in the crates up there, but a lot of these are empty. And there's also evidence in the corners here that they have maybe been down here for a while like you know several days at least perhaps with nothing to eat or drink but their own counterfeit health potions um and take it uh, from a red dwarf don't do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um what you see on uh the other side of some more barricades they've clearly taken these two long tables and <laughs> divided the room here down the middle um, each taking their own side. You see sort of a wiry uh, looking human um, man uh, peering at you over the the barricades and just says, are you sure it's gone? You sure you don't want to eat oh, my brain? We killed uh, it. Why would I ever want to eat your brain? Oh, everyone wants my alchemical secrets. I unlocked the universe. You sure? <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's no, it. That's no. okay. We're, we're good. <laughs> no secrets, friend. Madrigal just wanted us to check on you. Hadn't heard from you in a little bit. I don't believe you. It kind of hides around the corner. All right. Well, well I mean, do you want to stay? <laughs> like, do we have um, a lake now? Mr. The, the Bird, can you bird. talk to me? <laughs> um, she opens her beak again, and and you you hear uh, like an old man kind of go, "Ah, oh, he'll be all right." 
<laughs> uh, I'm good to go then. Like, I'm not going to stay here and convince oh. him. I mean, I can try to spell magic on him. I've seen him now, right? Yep, you sure have. You cast that on him? Yes. All right. Um, you, as you do that, he kind of blinks. And he just goes, Oh, man. I feel a lot better. <laughs> Yay. Well, that's good. Uh, I, I'm beginning to think that our uh, our potion uh, formula needs a little bit of tweaking. You think? I think, I think so. you've been tweaking <laughs> enough there, buddy. And maybe you shouldn't be the one testing it. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> oh, I never would. They're too, they're too expensive for us to, to use them except in an under, you know, emergency circumstances. Like... Like when there's a giant spider trapping you in your cellar, and then when you throw ingredients at it to try to make it go away, it turns into a big slime thing. Mm. That, that, that tends to happen it. when you uh, when you uh, mess with the uh, secrets of the universe. Still, might want to put a bottle of, or a barrel of water down here, you know, just in case. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> you're right. Uh, you know, we, uh, we kind of you saved guys your are life. Cool, right? Well, you know, if you have anything that you're not using that might help us along the way, I especially if no, it no, might no, be no, a no. nice I'm brew good. or a I'm good a, a special mm -hmm. kind of uh, spirit. <laughs> nah, not a spirit, spirit like regular spirit, not the ghostly kind. I don't follow moonshine, you. Moonshine, maybe. Whiskey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh I'm looking up what you're putting down here. No, <laughs> sorry. Oh. We're just making we're making the counterfeit potions here. I mean, counterfeit. you know, I'm trying to have them like work, but you know, we're certainly not going through the approved guidelines and all. It's a lot cheaper <laughs> this way. <laughs> we sell them for full price, though. It's a pretty good racket. Wait, you guys are said you're cool, right? Well, oh I mean, yeah, those things are pretty dangerous. We're working for magical. We're good. I don't. I don't think this is. I mean, I appreciate people who make things and stuff, but I don't think are I'm we good? running into the woods again. This might yeah. be, I might come back with a club from a spider. <laughs> a spider like club. Hmm. Still steaming. <laughs> oh yeah. Still Do I steaming. still have stuff on my um, armor? Because yes. Um... <laughs> in fact, now that you kind of look down, um, you you probably notice when the spider leg just completely kind of just falls apart in your hand now, and you look down and um, your armor has holes eaten in it, and it is you have lost one point of AC. No. Yay. Ooh. It's sad. <laughs> I think you might want to get your act together here, uh, uh, Ifton. Or wait, are you Ifton? Yeah. Is she Breaker? Yeah. Uh, well, confused. Breaker's what we call her. Tell her your real name, Breaker. And uh, she makes the sound of a, a, a glass bottle shattering. That is the weirdest name I've ever heard. That's why we call her Breaker. And uh, then Breaker opens her beak and says, Breaker. <laughs> um, I'll say good to meet you and do the same sound <laughs> with thaumaturgy. Um, I'm out agree. She she kind of looks at you, kind of just fascinated again, and then she comes over and she she hugs you, just like. <laughs> I think you made a friend. <laughs> yeah, she's friendly like that. So can we go? Like, can we get out of here? Like the, Who's the fumes, these, like these things that you make. What? Those, those bad potions upstairs. Well, Where do we they just go? we just ship them into the city. I don't know. Well, I guess she sells them. Hmm. That's not good. No, because people will use it thinking it's a regular healing potion, and they'll have some crazy effect, like what happened to Nira. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Nobody got hurt. Well, really. I, I mean, well, I'm if, dripping red. 
Literal hit points were lost. <laughs> yeah, but did you die? <laughs> well, that's different than not getting hurt. You said nobody got hurt. If you'd <clears throat> run off a cliff, maybe you would die, but... Right. I mean, people should know what they're getting into when they're buying discount health potions. Do they know it's you discount think. health potion? Well, you I said they sold at the full tag. price. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said you charge full price. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what price they sell them out. I just ship them into the city. Hmm. Maybe work on making better potions that people would actually pay money for. That's what there's I'm a lot of people. I'm there's a lot sure of I'm people. I'm going to get a superior healing potion pretty soon. Well, if we hadn't smashed all of my equipment, that is. Well, why don't you consider selling the healing potion and tell people that it's got this fun element to it? Because there are a lot of people, clearly, that go for that kind of thing, and it's worth it for the healing points. So you could possibly even make more money by oh. selling it in this way that you make it now, rather than being a legit potion. Ooh, bonus. And, and people know that it's not going to be just a healing effect. Recreation oh, yeah. healing potions. It, There's a prize right? inside every potion. Yeah, yes, it's like it's like uh, like placing a bet. Yep, it's like the wand of wonder, and people love that. That wouldn't be the first time I have drank, which gave me some extra side effects. This one might be a little bit more pleasant. Yeah, just a I thought. Will, I will pass your suggestion up to head office. I think that's something that we can relay to Madrigal as well when she pays us for checking on you. Uh, and for saving his ass. You can just tell her that it was giant spiders and you probably don't have to tell her about us making a giant purple thing monster sure, with Sure, sure. We'll do that. That part... Sure. The first spiders to attack were not at all our fault. Hmm. Really? Well, Maybe you need more people here to defend this place. Uh, we had more. Oh. So where did where where did the spider the spiders come from? Uh, if your potion turned them into this stuff. Well, they attacked the compound, and we we hid Breaker and me hid underground, <laughs> and one tried to come down after us, and that's when we threw the potions at it. And turned mm. into that thing. We didn't see what we 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 saw. At least one of our guys got caught by the other spider up there. So there's at least one more spider out there. Oh well, no, <laughs> not one anymore. less. <laughs> We're down two, so maybe that's all there are. I only saw the two big ones. But there was we nothing got a weird. Lot of ones too. There wasn't anything weird that happened when they arrived or right before they arrived. It's just a weird, random, wandering, giant spider duo well, attack. Uh, that sort of thing happens sometimes when you live out here. All right. <laughs> did <laughs> you have to a sell. horse, too? Uh, we did. You're going to need a new one, I think. Well... He kind of looks around at like just the devastation of the lab. I'll add that to the list. You know, <laughs> if you are working on some sort of superior health potion, that would be awesome. Something better than those little things. And if you were to make a few that weren't so um, rough around the edges, we'll be coming back through here at some point, and I'd really appreciate those. Consider it a payment for helping save your life. You know what? That's a deal. Uh, yeah. Assuming that we're still in operation in the, by then. They well, made all this mess. I'm sure you can make something better. Well, we'll check in with Madrigal, and then, you know, she'll decide what to do. Probably send help out here for you to get cleaned up and started back again. All right. I, I have to thank you for everything you did. I mean, not only killing the spiders, but helping me think a little clearly. You know, uh, I, I think it got to my head. Yeah, yeah. That'll happen. 
drink clear water and maybe occasionally some mushrooms. That's probably a little better for you. Mm -hmm. I reach in my bag. Have one of these. You'll feel better in the morning. <laughs> other mushrooms that I kept around. <laughs> Yikes. He, he just takes it and he just looks at it a little warily. Uh, maybe later. Maybe. He uh, stuffs it in an empty beaker. <laughs> That's going to turn into something. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'd stick around and help you clean up, but I don't think we do that. Correct. No. <laughs> yeah, these fumes are starting to get a bit potent in here. Let's get out. All Is right, there a so river nearby? I mean, closer than the lake, because I'd really like to take a bath. Um, he he kind of starts to uh, mumble, and uh, Andrew just says, I know where there's one. Ah, perfect. Um, all right, so I'd say you guys make your way back up out of the uh, the laboratory uh down here and uh um we you know make your way back up to the surface level there's the uh this this operation uh seems to have been rescued from the danger it was in yay <laughs> <laughs> well done you yay <laughs> <laughs> and so i think uh, as you as you collect your thoughts uh, and prepare to move on. Um, we will call this episode to close. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just reacting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, you guys. Yay. <laughs> All right, yeah, there was some good stuff there. So uh, uh, that that'll be the it for this time. And uh, I I hope you had fun. And thank you to those of you in the Twitch chat, uh, Paulette and Gus. I know we're in there earlier. And uh, and yeah. to any of you who are watching this or listening later, thank you. And uh, uh, definitely uh, send us feedback to let us know how we're doing and what you like about the show and what could be better and all that good stuff. Do all that. Do those things. I command you. Do them on so many levels. Make Perfect. a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> so we'll be back next time for adventure on so many so levels. Many levels. levels.